What's up? What's up? It's the Arthur Motes Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Motes, and that's my main man, Deke. What's good, bro? Come on, baby. First off, I got a new GMU hat, so I'm feeling extra nice. Okay. They do something good recently? Nah, they just got a, got a new hat. That was it. I just wanted to go shopping. You know, sometimes you need a little re- retail therapy is what I like I'm to call it. I'm with you, yeah. You know, need so, a little upgrade here. So, so I, had to, I had to, you know, boost it up with the new Nike hit. You know, I like it. Also got big UFC fight this week. Man, I'm, I'm super excited about that because, you know, anytime I get to see a little combat, a little showmanship as well. <sighs> Always hype about that. That's some big ones pretty close together, right? Heck yeah, man. This, this is a good card tonight, or excuse me, tomorrow night. So it's going to be really, really good. But then also, you know, we out here recording again. Anytime we get to talk to the good folks in the chat, have a little fun, drop us some content, can't complain. And my friend, my friend, he won an award last night. And I was very happy to see that. Close friend. Yeah, yeah, Closest yeah. friend, right? Yeah, best friend, be, best, best friend, now. Best friend ever. <laughs> Actually, you know, we got matching tattoos now that I think about it, you know. I saw my, my, my best, best. He's kind of like my brother, you know. And how you supposed to do it, right? We start talking about it. You just, it just gets, like, we're like family. Honestly, we vacation together in the Hamptons and in, in Wisconsin. You know, sometimes we go to Madison together. This is what we do. So I'm extremely excited. You know about today's dude, show. You inked up your chest, then. <laughs> oh yeah, come on, man. It's always been that way. Listen, dude, I stopped the whole work. You know, when I'm working out, I don't stop for nobody. I don't answer the phone. I don't do anything. I stopped the whole workout behind that man last night. Were you watching the awards? I was. I watched until he got the award, and I turned it off. Well, you I only watched like the first anymore. ten minutes, man. They, they, I was low key mad they had him go out there first. I'm like, oh. So y'all just gonna throw the defense player of the year award out there? I'll be there. straight like, up. It's I just was happy. Seeing with how that award show is going, I'm like, I don't want to watch this anymore. Yeah, it was definitely cheesy as heck. I- We're back, jeez, oh man. So can I tell you the truth though? I didn't hear anything except his speech, Michael Parsons' speech, and um, uh, when Calais Campbell was talking. Because I had the TV on, but when I'm working out, I have it muted, and I have like my music playing and stuff like that. So you didn't mess anything. Yeah, I just kept seeing. Uh, Even Keegan. TJ didn't say anything. I saw Keegan walking around, but I shout out to the dude though, Roger Goodell. I did actually catch that part because when he kept going around early, I'm like, I don't know what the what he's saying, but I don't really care. But then when Roger got up, I said, Hold on now. He's pretty. Think good. I'm gonna need to hit it. I, I was surprised. <laughs> Carried a cool little tune, low key. He was funnier than Gronk, actually. I thought the same. I was like, I mean, granted, Gronk I couldn't hear what flat. Gronk said, but Gronk looked a little like regular. Gronk fell flat, man. I think it's maybe yeah. because our expectations for Gronk being funny are always really high. Always, yeah. So if he's not doing anything outrageous, it's just mm-hmm. it doesn't live up. Yeah, and I even was thinking about uh, even the Barry Sanders when he had another situation where he's doing a little funny thing. So I'm like, with certain people, I do agree, man. I thought some of the jokes were good, or at least. Me just watching it without hearing it, it looked like the audience and those people involved looked like good, but then some of them was like, uh, cringe. There were a lot of heads there. There's actually was, people dude. that are playing the Super Bowl there. I was surprised. Yeah. I guess it's all out in LA. Yeah, right? it, is. it is. Mm-hmm. Still, I don't know if I'd be there if I was in the Super Bowl. But it was nuts because, like, Cincinnati, though, they weren't like that. Wasn't Burrow there, though? No, they had a little watch party. Oh. Yeah, Burrow and um, Jamar Chase. But they, That's what I was Yeah, do. so they already Don't had... Don't be there. But oh, they already had, like, the trophies, the too. Rams, yeah, yeah. They, they had, like, a little private area set up, and they would walk up to, like, a little Zoom camera-type situation with the trophy already there for them. So I was like, it probably took the suspense away, though, in a sense, because they would have to have known, like, when you're seeing them set the cameras up, set the yeah. dig on the ward up. Yeah. But it was pretty cool, though, man. I think that's a bad sign for the Rams. Hey, you might be right though. Be there, you might be right, the dude. The mission still is out there. Yeah, but but it was Cooper though, and Cooper was like a dog, dog this yeah, year. Yeah, he deserved it. Cooper, if anybody deserved it, Cooper definitely deserved to be there. So with that being said, man, let us know where you are tuning in from so we can get this show officially rolling the way we always do. All right, with our morning check in, let's go. Let's go. Oh, we got a couple super chats. I'll All just right, get go ahead, out rock out. Real quick. Heck yeah, let's do it. And I just like the video. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Hey, you a real one. And if you haven't liked the video just yet, what are you doing? Hit the like button. Let's not waste time today, ladies and gents. Brilla92 just says TJ, 30 sacks next season. Back to back deep boy. 30 sacks. <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, well, no, you know what? It, it's not too far fetched. You know what? If he would have played. All of his games this year. And actual full games, too, because we talked about how... Right, because technically, what did he end up with, 14? But two or of was the, it, No, was it, it was 15. 15. It was technically probably 14. Correct. Whenever you consider the half games. Yeah. Add three games to his pace right now, he's up to maybe 27, 28. Mm-hmm. That's what season. I'm saying, man. 
it's not it's not too far off man it's not too and all you need is a cheapy one where a guy's like slide and the guy ran out come on man he needs more he just need a couple more of those bro a couple more of those it adds up man i don't want to talk about it and that's and that's the biggest reason why every time when people would bring up michael strahan and how he got it i'm always like i do not want to hear that stop it all of them count because you can't just because that was the official break like the record breaking one we upset about that one it's like no nah, man we know what some of these sacks look like that's a part of it the you Browns just game <laughs> and the Packers come game on the two i remember absolutely and that's what three three sacks in between the two of those games the two oh, in Green there Bay. Was two in Green two Bay. Two in Green right. Bay. He had the one in the uh, okay. So I remember after the Green yeah, Bay game. Okay. TJ was a no show. You're okay. like, what do you mean he had two sacks? Like, yeah. What? <laughs> he had two. Yeah, man. Though. Yeah, he's saying 30 sacks next season. I like the it. Back -back. Black and Martyr just giving us some support. Nah, salute you, Black and Martyr. You know we got ma uh, major love for you. <clears throat> then I'll uh, give some of these shout outs. Right, let's do it. From your place. 757, Chesapeake, Virginia. Love to see it. You I love to it see it. Craig Ellis, tuning in from Lancaster, PA, mm -hmm. repping the 717. You ever been out there? Me? The 717? Lancaster. I have, actually. Um, Dude, what was I there for, though? It's just like farmland. Yeah, I forgot. I, I don't know what I was out there for, but I definitely have been out there. Yeah. I, we got relatives out that way. That's why I just brought it up. <laughs> Nick Donegan. Because I've only been to Lancaster once, and I've been to Harrisburg once. Yeah. And those all, I'm always thinking, like, well, I've been there once. I've been there once. And, yeah, yeah, Harrisburg, that's nothing either. I was there for, like, a. it was a celebrity uh softball game and that would have been like 20 whatever whenever the ravens won the super bowl that yeah, was the year i was down there for that so yeah 2012 something yeah. like that nick donegan modesto california mm, leah warren okay, okay. from the 254 colleen texas let's get it king cody tokes 570 sugarloaf pa let's get it let's get it dj lundy 757 your Lo spot again i love when you talk norfolk, about the crib Virginia, like that oh norfolk yeah, 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 yeah. Get with it, baby. We in the creep. What's technically your spot? Is that where yours is? So for me, I was born. City. So for me, I was born in Norfolk, okay. and I was raised in Portsmouth. So the way it worked, I spent till middle school in Norfolk, and then from middle school through high school, I was in Portsmouth. So that's why for me, I really relate to both areas. Cause like, no, I went to Granby for elementary. I went to Thurgood Marshall for this part, but then it's like, oh, I went to you know this school over here. And I went there, so. Yeah. So you just seven five seven. That, and that's why I hold it. Yeah. And then my sister, because like where we lived at in Norfolk before we moved to uh, Portsmouth was like right on the border of Chesapeake. So now we talk Chesapeake. That's a whole another area, but all the cities overlap though. So it's like if I was on this side of the street, I was in Norfolk. If I was on that side of the street, I was in Chesapeake. So you know. So we just call it the seven five seven, baby. Brian says tuning in from his grandma's basement. Shout out to grandma's basement. That could make him the new grandma's boy. And if anyone knows that movie, <laughs> you know we're fans. All right. You want to take some? Yes, indeed. I like how you just threw that back. Like yo, you, I got you, some you here. It's up here, to you. I don't want to be stealing the show. Nah, here. I, I kind of like when you you. All right, it's I'll a Friday, for, I'll go man. With some you, more. you you talk it on a Friday, man. It's the Stan morning. You know, I'm Claire. not a morning person. Yeah. Nine oh five, Toronto. Just saying, let's go. I like it. Rod Dollars. Atlanta, Georgia. All right, I'm going to come out for this one. All Vincent right. Murray, you know I got to shout the homie out Pittsburgh in, in the building. I know, man. He's probably been on the grind, though, you know? But I say so. We salute you, man. I know you. I feel like he was everywhere, too, man. I just kept seeing the 5-5. Five, five. I love it with the face painting it or with, with the mask. Or I would see the truck. The day going Jeep. I mean, the Jeep then got souped up. It's crazy now. But every time I see him, I'm like, yo, I know him. That's our guy. We know him. Represent. Uh, hey. And then, uh, let's see, King Star Boy 7. He says, what's good, guys? Good morning from Portales, New Mexico. You know, we talk about Mexico and New Mexico because I'm New Mexican, Irish, and all that other good stuff as well. So, yeah, man, I always like that right there. Shout out to King Star Boy 7. And then the last one before we get this show really, really rolling, it will be Thomas Riley because he says, hello, Moats and Deke from the 330 East Liverpool, Ohio. I just like that right there because he said hello instead of like, hey, what up? It was like real formal. Really polite. Yeah, I felt like I was reading an email. It was pretty cool. So well, I'll hit this super chat real quick then right. before we move on. Wade Keith says, forgive me if this has been talked about. Mm -hmm. Am I the only one talking about Aaron Donald repeatedly going for people's necks during skirmishes? <laughs> <laughs> Puts a damper on rooting for the Rams. I haven't seen this at all. Oh, no, no. This is definitely a thing. Without a, anytime he gets um, upset or any altercation with somebody on the football field, he goes to choke. You know, like some people will say, like, why are you punching a guy's face mask? 
and people always be like, yo, that's the dumbest thing ever. You're punching a guy, he has a helmet on. Well, AD doesn't do that. He just goes straight, I'm going to choke you out. <laughs> and for people, because they aren't accustomed to that style of, you know, tussles on the football field, it makes people feel a little bit, you know, uneasy about it. But for me, I love it because it's like, hey, y'all don't want people to punch helmets. This is a great alternative. I was a fan of people that choke. I'm a fan of people that kick as well because it's like, hey, man, if you don't want us to punch, all right, we'll go with the, you know, get get get, get full body work in there. So, Would yeah. you punch? Yeah, but it, it never I, seems like the smartest thing. It's, it's not exactly, but people you're gonna do hurt it. your own hand. People do it for me though. I've learned this through Debo. He says, no, if you can punch, punch, but punch body. So he teaches you punch body. Where? Your body. Abs? You can't. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you can't do shoulder yeah. go, go to the midsection, man. Absolutely. I'm sure that would hurt. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's you know, what he taught me. So I was like, all right, this is pretty cool right here. I like this idea. Well, you're right. I just YouTubed it. Two of the top, actually, the three top YouTube videos whenever you type in yeah. Aaron Donald choke. Aaron <laughs> Donald chokes Lucas Patrick. This was two months ago against the Packers. Yep. Uh, three months ago, Aaron Donald right. heated moments. Yep. And then just three weeks ago, Aaron Donald grabs yep. a Cardinals player's throat <laughs> after play. Yep. And then he had one where the uh, Rams and Cardinals were, I mean, the Rams and Cowboys were having joint practices. And uh, I forgot which lineman it was, but he chokes out one of those dudes as well. Like, that's that's his thing, bro. The fourth one. What <laughs> NFL players really think of Aaron Donald? <laughs> we have Russ Wilson <laughs> in the thumbnail and in quotes it says, yeah. plays dirty. So maybe Russ doesn't really like what Donald's doing either. Hey, man, I'll, I'm all for, you know, the force. Because I feel like when I see him choke, it's like Darth Vader, you know? He's like, come here. And he's ah, oh, I am the defensive player of the year. Say something to me, I'll choke you out. Like, that's his thing, man. Not this year. Yeah. Let's but go, he, you he even got votes, though. That's the crazy part. He did. He got votes. Yeah, there was eight people, right? Mm -hmm. Five for, it was either Donald or Yeah, five Parsons for Micah and then three, and for, three for, the for uh, Donald. Yeah. Let's go, Dub. just showing us some support. Message retracted. All uh, right. Not sure what he said, but. Well, either way, we appreciate you. So with that being said, man, let's hop into this first topic, which is my buddy, my best friend, my pal. In fact, you know, I'm going to go ahead and elaborate. And now we're roommates. Okay. I don't know if you realize we have a whole wing of this house. It's called the Watt Wing. Okay. We have like all this like workout equipment in there, pass rush bags, all the good stuff. Okay. Super healthy. And it's dope. Okay. Got three beds in there because I know he had, his brothers like to come over too. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's family affair. But my friend, my best friend, my roommate who lives with me, I mean, and we're, we're like I said, we're, we're pretty much joint families now. Joint families. You know, the AB Brady selfie now. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I mean. That's what I'm missing. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're pretty much, you know, just joint families. You know, he cooks on Saturdays. I cook on Sundays. That's how we do it. But, ladies and gentlemen, TJ Watt did officially win his first Defensive Player of the Year award. Man, it was definitely good to see. Um, I know for me, man, initially, I just loved it because he has earned this. Man, we've talked about him being on the cusp of winning this award multiple times. I mean, this could be his second or third time, realistically, having won this award. But for him, he had to wait a little bit longer. And we obviously knew he was he's frustrated. Still young too, though. Oh, super young. That's the crazy part. So it's like, yeah, we know he's been frustrated. Obviously, still a nation has been frustrated as well. But I just thought, man, it was like that perfect storm of him tying the record in terms of the sack record. Then having his brother, who's also a three-time Defense Player of the Year award winner, come out there to present oh, you him with the award. Presenting. Oh, yeah. As soon as I saw him, I was like, oh, it's a wrap. He got it. <laughs> it's done. Although I don't know if he presented in the past and he didn't win. I have no clue. I don't, I don't know the history just, of it, well, but it I know, felt like this well, is Well, because last year it was virtual. Remember, because last year they had okay. AD down at the uh, Super Bowl by himself. Just uh, Yeah, he was just by himself. It was like, almost like a pre-recorded video. And then I don't remember what happened the year before with Gilmore, who was presenting that. Yeah, I have no clue. Either. Yeah. But when as soon as I saw Jay, I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, it's destiny. Yeah, they can't be doing this. And, and I was even going this far. I was looking at where he was seated. I said, Aaron Rodgers on the front row right on the corner. I saw he's winning MVP. I said, oh, where's Cooper Cup? Oh, he's sitting right here and close to the front row. He's on the front row. Okay, he's office player of the year. I said, where's TJ sitting at? Okay, he's right there. And then I was like, where's Mike at? Mike was a couple rows back. I said, okay, we straight. We good. <laughs> because you know they ain't going to have that man walking no far away if he's the, the guy. You know, you got to be on camera a lot. So, yeah, but it was definitely good to see that, man. I, like I said, I just loved it. Then to actually hear him speak on the award, extremely humble as he's always been, even in the midst of every accolade he's received, the contract, still super humble down to earth. And it was also good to hear him shout out the training staff. 
the the guys that tape the ankles, the guys that you know work in the kitchen, the custodians, all these other people working that growing. yeah that <laughs> you silly bro. <laughs> But all the people that at times do get overlooked, it was cool that he took time to mention them in that moment for him as well, man. So, yeah, I definitely like that. But he also said, just makes them more hungry. More motivated. More motivated. That's what you love to hear. I say, man. It, it, was, it was definitely beautiful, man. It was beautiful. What was your thoughts on it, man? Yeah, no surprise. It's how it should have been. I'm just, I'm actually, eh, maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Steelers are always getting snubbed, dude. The eight votes for the other players. Mm-hmm. Because there's no way he wasn't going to win this award tying Strahan's record. And then Correct. no one else really stepped up the last month of the season. We could have mm. said the first two or three months, Diggs, Watt, is it Garrett a little bit in there? Well, I would say this, though. At the end of the year, Parsons did have a lot of momentum. I think it was the last two weeks he didn't yeah. really show up. Was that what it was? Yeah. No, the last game mainly. It was the, the last game really, really hurt him. Yeah, I don't know what he did the week before, but the week before it, it was more so T. Because remember, TJ had went crazy. You're right, Parsons TJ was went crazy. Some buzz. But it was the Cleveland game where TJ went Four crazy, sacks. and then after that, it was like, man, if Parsons doesn't do Ben's something, last right, game Monday night, too, right? We said helps. Parsons had to go crazy or Diggs had to go crazy, and when they didn't, it was like, all right, TJ go ahead and get another sack versus the Ravens. It's a rap rap, and when he did, it was like, oh, he tied the record, and at the time we thought he broke the record. Yep. That's when we were just like, man, unless Parsons went out there and had three sacks, it doesn't matter. And the same with Diggs. And because they didn't, that was the biggest reason. But Parsons definitely had momentum at the end. He was probably the only candidate that really sustained at that part of the season because Diggs definitely had died down. People started looking at the yards that he had allowed. Right. That was the he thing that was picks, killing him. He was getting torched at times. So yeah. A lot of his picks, what, did they come in like the first three yeah, or four weeks? Yeah, it was crazy. Like seven or eight yeah. of them came in the first month of the season. Yeah. And then with Donald, it was just, I mean, it was – Great year for any other interior D lineman, but for Aaron Donald, that's a down year, you know, in terms of the statistical stuff. Now, obviously, he still is a menace when you watch him on tape. He's still wrecking havoc, and he's a big reason why they're even in the Yeah, but he just didn't have the, the gaudy stats that we're accustomed to seeing with him. Because that's the question, and that's what we went back to last year mm -hmm. of who would you rather have on your team between Donald and Watt. Yeah. I can understand if you want Donald over Watt or consider him maybe the more valuable player, but mm -hmm. in terms of that single season, I felt like TJ had the better year. The stats were yeah. better across the board. No, it definitely but they was, still man. won with Donald. So I think, I know a lot of people are saying should have won it three years in a row. Mm -hmm. I think it should have at least been two. The third one, I think that's a little bit more up for debate because there yeah. were other edge rushers that I think were pretty deserving at that time. You're talking about the year when Gilmore won it, right? It was Gilmore because yes. there was Chandler Jones, mm -hmm. there was Shaquille Barrett. And well, then and Gilmore also had Gilmore that crazy stat, too. Had the couple pick sixes. That New England defense was pretty dominant. But he had the stat. They of, did tail off a little bit, though. That was but, more of the but, offense. But but you got to remember, Gilmore, he ended the season with the stat that he scored more touchdowns than he allowed. And we knew he was shadowing the number one receivers every week. Yeah. That I thought he was stat, yeah, yeah, that stat in itself was just insane when you think about, like, how? Like, when you think of all the – even Jalen Ramsey can't say that. You know what I mean? Like, how many of these elite corners that travel, they don't have more touchdowns than the guys they're guarding, you know? So, that was the why for me, I was like, man, I could I, – and even during that time, I was even like, yo, Gilmore. Like, it makes sense, man. I at the time, too. Yeah. Uh, but what's crazy is that still might have been TJ's best season. Low-key, yeah, because I was the year when Ben went down. Yeah. Low-key. Like, those strips, He was going he nuts, like bro. nine or ten Yeah, he went sacks. nuts that year. Whereas this year, I know he broke the or tied the sack record, but some of the sacks, as we mentioned, yeah, eh, yeah. Eh. Whereas that year, it was no fluff it felt sacks. Like it was like so every sack much was more real impact. Yeah. yeah, because of the offensive situation mm -hmm. too at the time. Now, granted, he had some clutch moments this year too. Yeah, without a doubt, Seahawks basically completely winning us the game, mm -hmm. which would give Ben the chance for the game winning drive. No, 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 no. Ben won us that game. <laughs> I, I saw the video. Ben, Ben put us in position to score and win that touchdown. Man, yeah. TJ set that game. up Ben to be clutch. Yeah, yeah that, that's nice. what he did. That yeah, because nice who got who got the step for for most you know <laughs> clutch drives, most game winning drives. Most game -winning drives. See, TJ was helping him out. He said, "Yo, Ben, I know you want this stat, so let me get you real quick." That's all. <laughs> Definitely deserving though. I just think the competition maybe yeah. in 2019 was a little more stiff. Last yeah. year, I think you should have got it. This year, obviously, there was just no debate. This year, yeah. I think if well, this would have been highway robbery. Oh no, no, if. if if he wouldn't have won it this year, I, it, yeah, it, it, it would. It I don't know what would have happened. Honestly. I would. It would have uh, got our pitchforks. We would have started rioting, man. You know, I was ready. I was hyped up. I was gassed up. But I figured. I was like, man, I know Roger. I know NFL. They not doing this. Not happening this year, man. Mm -mm. I just couldn't imagine it. So that's why 
I guess maybe a little bit part of you was thinking, how are they going to pull off this snub, baby? How are they going to pull I, low this key, one off? Low key, I was like, yo, if they come in here with the, oh, it's Michael Parsons, dawn of a new era, he just set the league on fire, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> and I like Parsons a lot, but I would lose it. But that was the only one I thought they could try it. Because the whole Dallas connection, what he did as a rookie, and splitting time, I was like, man, he he had a nice case. And I do think it was nice that he was reflected of that with the votes. Him getting five votes, man, as a rookie, big time salute. It's guys, it's guys that never get votes. Trust me, I've never got a vote like that. Like, that <laughs> five votes as a rookie, like, bro, you are that guy. Like, that's pretty significant right there. But I was like, man, don't y'all try that. Don't, 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 don't make this bigger than what it is. Okay, y'all, y'all know what TJ is. Y'all know what he's been for the past couple of years. Y'all, you know, we know how this has been. Don't do it this year, please. And he's got his one. That's big. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. we're hoping he had for to multiple get that, throughout his career, but, but he need that man to put him in the class with some of the other Steeler greats that people are bringing up, like Mel Blunt, yeah. Jack Lambert, Joe Green, Harrison, Paul Amalu. He's in that class, so it's just yeah. nice to see him amongst us, the other greats. Man, too. you know, I'm actually glad you brought up my other best friends because I didn't, I didn't tell you I have four like best friends slash roommates because T.J. Watt obviously is defense player of the year, right. James Harrison. Troy Palomalu and Stefan Gilmore. I mean, I'm just thinking of all my best buddies. <laughs> I thought you were going to add Mel Blunt because you well, interviewed well, him. Well, you know, I've interviewed him, but I don't want to claim him because I haven't shared. Age difference. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't in the locker room with him. We weren't in the trenches together. But those four guys, we were in the trenches, man. So it's like, it's kind of like all of our trophies. I'm, I'm going to just call them up and say we can just display them behind us for like an episode. I'm sure they'll be cool Not with that. Gilmore. No. No. Why? What would it be? Pictures or bobbleheads? No, I want the actual the Oh the trophies. The trophies, yeah. Gilmore's you could like put behind you, so it's not. Oh, like that's crazy, man. I can't be having that up here. Why? He wasn't even in Buffalo then. Patriots just but as you, bad. Just Time out I told now. You. Time out now. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Time everyone. out. Time out, time out, time out, time out. What do you mean just as bad? <laughs> what do you mean just as bad no no maybe no it's a little more nuanced than that but pretty much no, i told you it's Steelers no, versus everyone no 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 patriots are always enemy number one uh ravens AFC North rivals, yeah raven yeah there. but then Cowboys. after that yeah buffalo is down the totem pole in terms of all that so don't, don't you start with that all right not today <laughs> If it ain't Steelers, it ain't nothing. That's, that's the mentality. That but is not you're what right. you told me. I get what you're saying. You told there's, me. There's a nuance to it. I you told me whatever. I could be a certified lover boy for whatever team I likes. All the teams that I likes. I told you. Plurals you on the likes. Back, you know? Wherever your heart leads you. Well, you said that we could both be led to Buffalo because when we left last time, you were having a very heart-to-heart -heart conversation with my son. I was really, uh -huh. it touched my heart. I was like, man, look at Deke in this moment talking to Baby G about Crocs and about teams. He's bringing up JMU. He's pointing out Steelers and Pens and Pirates. And Deke says, you know, I think I need a Bills one because I actually don't have any Bills stuff. And he said... You know what, Deke? I got one for you. And Deke's face lit up. Like, I, like you know how Deke's face get when he gets excited. He starts smiling. I'm like, whoa. And then he left. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So so I know you really deep down. You like the Bills a little bit, man. Just a little bit. That story's got a lot of flaws in it. But what but I will you, say. I got a lot of flaws. <laughs> Why's it got to be all that, man? Stop. <laughs> no, what I was going to ask is, uh, does G already have one? He has a little Bills widget for his Crocs. Chill, goes, chill, oh, chill. Man. I, I, He's got the Cardinals. I cannot confirm nor <laughs> deny the accuracy of that report right there, okay? Damn, dude. It's cool, man. It's cool. Like I said, man, you played for those teams. We're not going to understand. I lean in, man. They oh, drafted you, too. They did, I mean. man. You know? Yeah, but, but before, you know, Deke liked me, you know, it was a Deke in, in Buffalo that liked me, you know? Was there? I don't know, for real. Probably was. Uh, uh, yeah, Zeke. I'm sure, yeah, yeah it, it might have been Zeke. Yeah, it, it, it was Zeke in Buffalo. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was jumping the seven. I wonder what he's doing. What's wonder what the alter ego is doing. Oh, up there, no, maybe. man. If, if, you, if, you're, if you're on white claws, slugging it out at a corporate if you're job, on white claws, he's got to be on like Natty. No, he's probably on Labat Blue. He's a Labat Blue. Yeah, I wonder what he's doing because with me, mm -hmm. I, I kind of got lucky with this whole situation. Man. Without all this, who knows? I was doing insurance sales. I was doing yeah. corporate jobs. Like, if he didn't know, find man. an NFL player you're, you're to right, attach dude. to. I'm sure he found my alter ego. Who's my I don't alter know, though. We don't hear a podcast out there. You're right. You're right. We got to figure out who the we alter ego. We don't hear ego. the Jerry Hughes podcast with Zeke. <laughs> we don't hear anything about that. The Jerry Hughes podcast with Zeke. Yo, you a fool. We don't hear about hey. that. So maybe he's homeless. Who knows? Yeah. He might be, man. He might be. <laughs>
<laughs> I just feel guilty all of a sudden. Like, yo, he's homeless or something. Like, I'm sorry, Zeke in Buffalo. But maybe next time I got you. Yeah, oh, multiverse, right. like the Spider-Man yes. multiverse. No question, stuff. man. All right, we got a couple more supers, and then after that, um, oh, but actually, before we get to the supers, um, quick reaction though, um, what did you think of Michael yeah. Parsons being the first rookie to be unanimously named defensive player of the uh, defensive rookie of the year? Oh, yeah. Who else was it going to even be in the conversation? That's what I'm thinking too. I was cool with that. Definitely. I was just surprised that there's never been a unanimous winner of that before, though. Because you would think, like, with some of these big, like, a Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, um, J.J. White even, Von Miller. Like, we can go down the list of all these major name guys, but the fact that it's never been a unanimous winner, I'm just like, man. That's a good point. And that's what I just got to think, and I'm like, well, who could have gotten votes this year? <laughs> but if Micah was getting no, there was on, no one close. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe early in the season we were talking Shertan a little bit. But then he got hurt, yeah. No way. Yeah, there's no one else. Yeah. Because I was like, man, once I saw him receive, like I said, the uh, actual depot vo- uh, depot votes, it's hard to give a vote to any other rookie if this man as a rookie is getting, like I said, that type of consideration. Yeah, there's some big names. Keekly, right. Marcus Peters, Donald. Like, think about Luke Keekly, bro. Luke Keekly was setting the league on fire, too. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Well, they have a voting here. They have a voting next to it. Let's see. who. Yeah, who's getting votes with him? So, with Keekly, Bobby Wagner, second place. Ooh. 28 for Keekley, Wagner with 11. Okay. RG3 smoked Andrew Luck for offense wow. that year. Vaughn Miller. I'll go through like yeah, the three bigger or four name names. Ones, yeah. Okay. Vaughn. Oh. Who was on him? Vaughn Miller kind of smoked it. He he had 39. Alden Smith, 11. I remember Alden. Alden was Alden nice, Smith had bro. 14 sacks. He Alden did have nice. more sacks. Alden was nice, bro. Heck yeah. Alden just kind of stay out of trouble. But Alden was nice, nice as a rusher, bro. He almost got snubbed. He had 14 yeah. sacks. Well, he, dude, Vaughn Miller had 11 and a half. Personally, I know during that time, we were kind of leaning a little bit more to Alden because of the size he had with him. We just he just like was freakier because of like how much bigger he was, whereas Vaughn is a little bit shorter than uh than Alden, man. Sean Merriman. He had a huge role here. So this is going to be. <gasps> Love lights, man. Shout out to the homie. Yeah, he had 10 sacks. Second was Lofa Tatupu, 28 and a half votes. How do you do half votes? 28 and a half for Merriman, know, yeah. 16 and a half for Lofa Tatupu. Man, yeah, there hasn't been, it's the discrepancy is still not as bad yeah. as TJ's yet up to this point, though. Uh, well, we're talking rookie of the year anyway. Well, he, yeah, because I'm, I'm losing myself here. It happens. We're talking about Michael yeah. Parsons. It happens. I initially thought it's we were good. talking him and it's TJ. All good. With it the it's all good. It happens. It's all good. It happens. Now we're talking <laughs> unanimous to Michael Parsons. All right, all right, all right. One more. I, I know you. I know you always ready to you know get, get your get your sword and your shield and get to going to work. I, I got you, man. I want to do one more. <sighs> Dominican Sue, maybe. Oh, that's my class. Heck yeah! What? How many votes I get, bro? Oh, how many votes? Sm- I get snubbed. He was like almost unanimous. So I got snubbed. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, you should have been doing that back in the day. I feel like I got snubbed, bro. Snub. I feel like I got snubbed, man. You should have been posting the Jordan. Yeah, the man. Yeah, I, 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 I heated up at the end of the season my rookie year. Come on, man. Okay, Sue got 48 votes. Devin McCourty got two. Oh, I forgot about McCourty, yeah. Sue probably should have been unanimous. Holy hell. Oh, no, McCourty had seven picks. McCourty was McCourty straight. Him and his brother. I was going to say, Sue had 10 sacks, and he was dominant early on. Yeah. Really dominant. So, so they going to give him all those votes for 10 sacks. My rookie, I had two and a half sacks, and I ain't get no votes. That's crazy. How did I get a half a vote? Like, where's the love at, bro? I don't know. They always disrespect me, man. was number three for offensive rookie of the year that, oh. that year. Pounce Sam Bradford won. Pounce was a dog, though, bro. Look at these stats that won at the time. Sam Bradford. 3,500 yards, 18 touchdowns, 15 picks. 18 for 15. Lord. Mike Williams for the Bucks. 964 yards, 11 touchdowns. Mike gave Williams, it. the receiver, right? Yeah. That was the one, because it's been like, there was a I feel like it's one. been like three Mike Williams, guy. right? Yeah. I feel like it's been like three. I'm like, which one? Is that the big one? Is that the little one? Or is that the medium size one? Yeah, he kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> but Bradford, I mean, for Pouncey to get some votes as a center. Yeah, that's bad. pretty dope, bro. <laughs> but I'm telling you for a fact, like, even as a rookie, we all could look on that tape and be like, oh, I don't know much about the center position, but this dude is different. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about the other guys? The only one I think there's any debate would be MVP. Uh, yeah, yeah, because Cooper, I'm, I'm... Oh, you're leaning Cooper MVP? I would have said Brady. No, 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 not leaning. I just, you know, I'm saying Cooper definitely I thought was the offense player of the year. But 
Cooper would probably have been the only person. Are you thinking Taylor? Yeah, yeah he kind of had a case. It, right. I, th- I think Cooper's year was just too. It good was though. nice, but see, borderline for me, the best receiver. But see, for me, season, I would have liked to have Cooper get really just more consideration for MVP personally. But we already know how that kind of goes. Where you know the MVP has really become that quarterback award, which we're not fans of all the way, but we understand why. You know, it is what it is. How'd the voting go for MVP? Like I said, I, I didn't actually. I didn't watch the voting, like to see, yeah, all of that. I just knew like I when am he won. I'm kind of interested. Did he get any votes, or was it all? It obviously, wasn't unanimous. We'd right. be talking about it. Wow, Rogers got 39. Brady got 10. Cooper Cup only received one. Yeah, see, 39 to 10. I thought it was gonna be closer, at least between Brady and Rogers. Rogers is going off though, and that whole back to back. You know, he was the the you know the upset guy in terms of why he was going about what he was doing so yeah. for me yeah i get it i could see it how maybe rogers had less help throughout mm-hmm. the whole season up in green bay although i don't know about that because aaron jones no, really yeah, good dude. running back yeah, Dylan, yeah. that line was surprisingly really Absolutely. good Devontae adams bro Devonte is arguably the best receiver in the game right now my thing is you just want a single game you want to talk about who's value i just want yeah. brady which you're betting your money. I want Brady over Rodgers, and Brady had the stats too to yeah. go with it. Of course, so you would want thing. Brady because that's your favorite quarterback. I would always choose Ben because I'm loyal. But I digress. <laughs> Anywho, Vince Murray says been working a ton lately. Getting mm. my Jeep ready for the auto show coming up. Oh yeah, that's uh what next? Is that next weekend? Auto show. Say, yeah, the, we got um, a Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh auto, auto show. show. Yeah. Where's that at? Out usually, in uh, um, no, it's usually down at the uh, the convention center. Oh okay. yeah. Um, yeah, I used to go there all the time, man. I love, love that. You got to pull your car into the convention center. They're going to have it on, like, the main floors and stuff. Yeah, so you should do, yeah. Really? Yeah, they'll have, like, usually, like, off? two two levels, yeah. But they do a lot there. They'll have, like, AAU basketball tournaments, all type of stuff, like, in that. They used to do yeah. some fun stuff back in the day. Or at least this was just one year. Mm. The 06 All-Star Game. They had MLB All-Star Game. Yeah. Game. They had a whole, like, All-Star Game festivity for the whole week down at the yeah, convention dope. center. It was really cool. That is dope. Also says, also in the works for updating my Steelers outfit, figuring out a name for my character. Whoa. Let's go. Is he going to be like a wrestling character? I the bigger the He's better. He's got the mask. I know, bro. The mask sets it off. The mask definitely sets it off, man. He says the grind won't stop. I like it. I like it, baby. One more. Mm-hmm. All strikes back. Might be a Star Wars fan. I Outside hope so. of the more talked about positions, O-line, QB, defensive line, DBs, are there any halfback or wide receiver depth you like in free agency or the draft? Is Snell fine? I like Rambo for receiver. I don't know who Rambo is. Um, <clears throat> actually, I have not really looked into the running back wide receiver free agency market just yet. Yeah, actually, I have to look into that. We That's actually a good question. A little bit in passing, like some of the top receivers: Will Fuller, right. Allen Robinson, uh, Robert Woods. Yeah, we talked about. Or him. no, we have to trade for him. Right, but we were saying like in that right. conversation, though, we were talking about of all guys. those caliber guys. Yeah. Sanders, but he might be retiring. Yeah, here. Mm-hmm. and then running backs: James Conner, Fournette, yeah. Cordell Patterson. We talked about. Yeah, I guess you're right. Though I don't know. Marlon Mack. Yeah, so I guess we have talked about those guys then. Yeah, yeah. a little bit in Pat. It was just kind yeah. of looking up on the spot. I mean, Patterson for running back. I think we both Yeah, we, we James like Connor wouldn't most. hurt. We don't think he's coming back. And Marlon Mack would probably be like that in between of Connor and Patterson that we could make work. Receiver, I yeah. wouldn't mind Fuller. I know he's hurt all the time. But if we're going to drop Juju, yeah. Fuller with Claypool and Deontay, that could be kind of nice. Well, and... I think now he might be getting fifteen. Everyone's well, talking about this receiver market. Because I was about market. to say, yeah, if Jeez, and I was gonna say if Deontay is gonna get that, then that X is Woods out of the conversation as well for any trade type of stuff. Because Woods yeah. is he's already fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. Now people brought this up about the receiver market and how oh man Deontay is actually asking for mm-hmm. a bargain right now. You know Jarvis Landry's getting fifteen. Mm-hmm. Who was the other? Some of the other names that were brought up. One of them was Jarvis Landry. Another one was Cortland Sutton. There was one more, but three receivers mm-hmm. that uh, Robbie Anderson. Yeah. When you look back in their contracts, it's like, yeah, those teams overpaid for those. Yeah, receivers. it's a I'm bad sure deal. Those teams are it's a bad deal, man. Or actually, yeah, trying to get off them or yeah. regretting them very much. There's something called resetting the market, or yeah. not resetting the market, market correction. Mm-hmm. And I think that could be the case in the coming years with some of these receivers yeah. because we saw it with the running back market. Just because no, absolutely, yeah. they paid David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell that kind of money doesn't mean you have to do right. it. Right. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And that's kind of where I'm at with it, too. It's like you wanted to get paid, absolutely, because he's earned it. But when you start talking about 15 and it's not <clears throat> to that type of impact, 
on the field every game. And that's the difference, too. It's like when we speak of a true receiver that's making that type of money that is deserving of that, it doesn't always have to be they're scoring touchdowns, but they draw coverage as well. You know, they, they, they do things that they're always impacting the game. And right now for Deontay, it's like he's a good receiver, but he doesn't have that effect just yet. Teams aren't saying, hey, we got to allocate two guys to him or we can't play this coverage against him just yet. Teams aren't necessarily worried about him being a consistent home run threat because even though we saw it a couple times this year, it was still very sporadic in terms of how often we would get a chance to see it to even put that as like, that's him. Right now, we say he's the you know, really good route runner, can get open in a hurry, but we don't really feel that, you know, he he's just taking the top off of defense. That's what we keep saying. We want a speed, so we want somebody that can bring us that element. So when I think of that, I'm just like, I don't want to pay 15 per year if I'm not getting that caliber player because I'm still going to be looking for that caliber player while already paying 15 for somebody that's not that caliber. Yeah, could we draft yeah. a dude in the first or second round mm-hmm. to at least – in that first year, get 80% yeah. of Deontay's production, right. and then we could spend that 15 on like defense on a lockdown cornerback yeah. or something, because that's what I would prefer. No, I like that as well, And we man. saw what we've done with receivers throughout our Steelers history here with Ben. Yeah. I mean, it's because of... Uh, a decent reason is because of Ben. Yeah, like, he is, be he is. But like, you yeah, know, as we were drafting you. third rounders, yeah. Mike Wallace comes in his rookie year is almost 800 yards. Yeah. Claypool, his rookie year. So it's really not the end of the world if we don't re-sign receivers because, as we saw, yeah. we could keep the train moving without them. Not without a doubt, man. I would like to keep Deontay, but 15 just feels like too much right now. If he cleans up the drop completely, improves a little bit next year, yeah. now we're talking. Yeah. and, and that's, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the market's just way too inflated and 15's actually a steal. Who knows? I just don't feel like it's that way. Jarvis Landry getting 15, that's, ter- that's a terrible deal. I would say, I don't like that deal. And it's that's the thing. Deal. It's like, just because he got it don't mean that I want to do that as well. Like, I think Deontay is better than the three receivers I yeah. named. Sutton has a little bit more upside, okay. has a chance to bounce back. But mm-hmm. just because he's better, it doesn't mean we have to pay him that. Yeah. I just And I'm trying to think when Jarvis got that deal, was that him fresh out of Miami? I think so. <sighs> Because I'm like, Jarvis in Miami was still like their main dude receiving and gadget stuff as well. I just felt like his impact, like you knew, like granted, he's not going to take the top off the defense guy either, but they ran that offense through him. Yeah, what do you have, like yeah, receptions? Yeah, but we don't run our offense through Deontay. We run it realistically through Najee and, I mean, at Ben at the time. So, yeah, 15, that's all this. Whew. Well... I was going to say, we don't have to make a move now, but third year going into yeah. fourth year, I guess we these are going to be the talks. This yeah. might actually happen. As you said, it might be the week before the season. Seriously, yeah. At, at some point, man, look for that extension to happen, man. Definitely. All right. Well, I think we're all caught up. I like it. All right. So, you know what? Let's go to this next topic. But before we do that, <clears throat> I want to pay a bill real quick. Can we pay a bill? Sure. All right. I'm going to need to get a little sip to, you know. Mm. Because, you know, the big game is this weekend, right? Yeah. I'm expecting some scoring. I'm excited Is about it? scoring. Heck yeah, you should be. Not a defensive game. I don't expect defense, man. We got LA, we got Cincinnati. We know they put up points. So it should be some big time scoring. And I know that they're going to be scoring on the field, but guys like us, we like to score off the field, baby. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you are always prepared, Deke. And you know the best way to be always prepared, right? Best way to do that is with Manscaped because they are the leaders in below the waistline grooming. Now, Deke, I'm going to coach you up here, okay? Because I've been married for 10 years, going uh, on 11. I've it. scored a lot, you know? Yeah. But it's a method to the madness. It is. It is. Okay? And I'm going to draw the perfect play for you. Are you ready? Let's hear it. Okay. Now, usually my favorite play is the annexation of Puerto Rico. But for you, I'll make an exception. We're going to call this the Ultra Premium Collection. All right? Whoa. That's how we call it. You got me? Yeah. Ultra, pre- ultra Premium Collection on three. Okay? So the way we start this out is this. You got to turn the shower on. All right? Shower rolling? Okay, cool. You gets in the shower. You got to start with the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Hold on. Boom. You see it right here, right? You see it? Two-in-one shampoo. You, you got to use that, baby. Hair. You got to use it, okay? Good. It's perfect, okay? Two-in-one shampoo. All right? That's the first thing you're doing. So now as you're lathering it up, all right, you're good, you're good, you're good. Next thing you need to do is hit the body wash, okay? You got to get the body wash. Now, listen, when you're doing the body wash... Some people out here, they don't like to wash below their knees. They say the water can just run down and it'll get it up out of there. 
<laughs> that is not how this play works, okay? okay? The ultra premium collection play, you got to wash your knees, you got to wash your ankles, and you got to get in between your toes, okay? That's what this is for, okay? Right well, listen, here. Listen, I already have that at my house. I wanted to mention Let's this. Let's go. Give Manscaped some props mm -hmm. here. I wear that. I hit the scene on one of these weekend nights. Ooh. The shorties are complimenting me left and right. Let's go. Let's so go. that has to be part of the playbook. Let's go. Now, next thing you got to do, you rinse it all off, right? Now you get out, dry yourself off, okay? But now you got to hit the deodorant. Oh, my goodness, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Couple stripes of that. How you smelling fresh? I don't have that part of my playbook just yet. Come on now. It should be a good addition. It's Come like running the jet sweep in Canada's you, office. Listen, if you don't have the jet sweep, man, what are we doing, right? <laughs> but more importantly, this is the last essential thing that you have to have. It's the Manscaped lip balm, baby. This ah. just dropped. Come on now. You can't score with chapped lips. Winter. Listen, I've tried to score with my wife with chapped lips. It's like, uh-uh, baby. I love you, but not that much. Lip balm right here changed the game. That's all I'm saying. We put off 50 the other day. Okay. <laughs> so once you do all that okay and you're feeling good and you're deciding whether you want to clothe or not clothe you know it's optional the last thing that i always you know recommend if you trying to add that that finishing touch the cherry on top might i say oh yeah manscape body spray oh, oh my okay. goodness you just Hit that one time like that. This is that. better than that axe spray that you used back in like sixth grade, right? They're washed. Is, we don't even talk about that. Stuff. But this right there, buddy, that is what you want. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the play. You don't want to miss out on the play. But more importantly, Deke, more importantly, we got promo code, baby. So, with that being said, use the promo code MOTES so you can get your 20% off and free shipping worldwide at manscaped.com. Don't miss out, baby. Score as much as you need to score this week as you're watching the big game after the big game and all that other good stuff. And as always, baby, hey. So, back to our regularly scheduled programming now, man, you know? <laughs> I had, I had, every once in a while, you got to pay a little bills, right? I think that was a segment in and of itself. It, it low-key <laughs> felt like a segment, man. I got, I got excited, bro. I'm not going to lie. No, I like I it. got that excited. Was, that was fun. They, they, they sent the products over. They're like, yo, man, this is how you got, you know, have a little fun. I'm like, oh, you know, you done told that to the wrong person. No, that stuff is good, though. I like it, Straight though, bro. Straight up. The, yeah. the Manscaped body wash, the uh, the shampoo and stuff. That's what I got right now. So tell it's pretty you, bro, good. Score. You will score. Yeah. Touchdown. Bam. All righty. So let's see. What is our next topic, by the way? No, the super chat real Yeah, quick. you hit that, and I'm going to pull up this. Caleb Cole, this is on the Deontay talk. Let Johnson play on the current contract and tell him every, dro <laughs> every drop this season, he will lose a million. Oh, man. That's cold blooded. For the next contract. No drops equals 15. And here's the other thing. Oh, uh, yeah, People I keep saw bringing it. up yeah. the stats, right? Mm -hmm. Deontay, two drops for the season. I don't uh, know where they're coming up with this. I have well, no, clue. no, no. Think about it. Like, this is the I issue. I have no clue. So this is the issue. Drops, similar to kind of like tackles in the sense of like when you're watching it week to week, is really subjective in terms of how what people will classify as a drop versus like a bad throw versus a missed tackle. You watch some of this stuff and you'll be like, oh, he only had two drops. How? And I'm like, I can point to this game where I seen this ball hit his hand. But if the person watching it says, well, you know bad what? Throw. The ball should have been here. It was here. Uh, I don't care if it hit his hands. That's bad throw. Defender around. Yeah. They, like, they'll classify some of the stuff like that. Yeah, man. Absolutely, dude. I would have guessed seven or eight. And I would have guessed mm -hmm. 80 to 90% of those came in the last month. That's I would agree, I would as, well. I would agree as well. Because I know the whole stat was, oh, Deontay didn't drop one for the first half of the season, whatever it was. Yeah. I think he at least had one. Yeah, it was like, I was oh. fine with the stat because it, there was nothing egregious about right. the drops at that point. But then it started picking up that last mm -hmm. month. And then in, yeah. they came really bad in the playoff game. So they don't count that for regular season either. Had yeah. the fumble in the Chiefs game too. And that's the, I'm like, man, this is – we can't unsee what we saw. <laughs> so it's like you can try to tell me whatever number you want to tell me. I know what I watched. I know what I felt. I know when I went back and rewatched it and – how it felt. So either way, I don't want to feel like that and then have to compound that feeling with the fact that it's 15 mil accounted to that guy as well. Like, What's that conversation going to look like for the contracts? Now, I don't know if Deontay's in the room or not, but he's saying, look, look at the stats. Only two drops. 
Is Art Rooney is well? Kevin Colbert won't be here. The GM at the time. Tom, are they just gonna say, "Come on, bro"? Are they just gonna say, "Come on, bro"? Yeah. Are they gonna have the Are they gonna have the tape right behind? What about this one? Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. They're gonna have their ammunition. I can assure you of that. Okay. Live PowerPoint presentation. They gonna hit you with it. We did our own research. We had our own stats. We did our own self scouting of you, big fella. Those okay. Funny, though. Yes. <laughs> They gonna run that number up. They gonna be combining full, st- <laughs> whichever looks worse. If the full four year numbers of drops looks worse collectively, they'll go, hey, over a four year span, this is what you've done. If it looks yeah, worse over like a two year, if it looks worse over a two year span, they are gonna say, oh, over the past two years, you've done this amount of drops. Like they're gonna pull it like that. Whatever sounds worse, that's the one they going with. That sucks for him too, because it's probably mm-hmm. one thing he's just really trying to put on the back yeah. burner. But it's always gonna be brought up for a little yeah. bit here until it's just gone, gone completely. Nah, true, man. Definitely true. But even though one pops up, who knows? And then the narrative's back. <laughs> this is how it's gonna be, man. Yeah. That is how it's gonna be. All right, but to uh, keep this thing rolling, um, let's see, let's see. Did you? You already get? Yeah, you already hit the super. That yeah. was Caleb. So yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit of the Super Bowl. You know. Because okay. obviously we still got to make our prediction as well. Since you said I could bet the house on this one, I think you know, we do you it. said it's the one. I think we do it. So I'm up three right now. Yep. But it only feels right to give you a chance that last ditch effort. Although it feels like I'm giving you a better chance than a last ditch effort. Better chance than we, a we, listen, This is like fifty fifty. But listen, we don't have to get into all the particulars of it. You I'm know, being a nice guy. We're just gonna roll with it. You know, it, it just is what it is. We, we, we I'll pat you on the this back too. This one counts as three. There we go. You know what I mean? Like. It, it, it's kind of like when we talk about some of these odds. It's like, oh, man, you get, you know, three to one odds for this or 56 to one odds in some cases, you know, promo code modes, you know how we do. But, you know, with this situation, it's pretty cool. I'm even cool. I'm, I'm happy that you're even going to pick whoever and just leave me with whoever. Like, I'm all down for that. I as can't well, lose that, right? Yeah. Oh, you're letting me pick? Well, we know what it is. We already know what the picks are. Yeah, because I know who, who you want to root for, man. It's cool, bro. Yeah, I'm a, I'll go with the Rams. You go with the Bengals, right? Yeah. That's what it is. I, I, unfortunately, I guess I got to go with the you're big. Forced. Oh, God. I mean, huh? oh, out of all the teams, you're going to just make me pick them? Oh, jeez. The reigning comeback player of the year? Oh, the reigning rookie of the year? Oh, I'm got, surprised Dak didn't get it. I look he was too, bro. When did that happen? When did that change? Honestly, I feel like the play now, granted, I know voting hadn't it doesn't affect it, but I really felt like the end of the year slash playoffs really Joe Burrow like took over all of that. Yeah. Because I definitely thought that this was gonna be Dax thing in the same Dax vein as Alex style Smith. Of injury, yeah. Right. But it honestly both of the injuries were bad. One's an ACL injury, one was a compound fracture of the lower leg. So both were gonna be long injuries surgery grueling and stuff like that i just think the optics looked a lot worse because you could physically see it oh, whereas yeah. with the acl you don't see what it looks like even though it's just as significant as some in some Did cases brady won it when he tore his acl and came back um i'm not sure actually i'm just wondering how often they do the whole just acl then come yeah back. but we've seen comeback players win it without having injuries remember Tannehill? we talked about him he yeah, just went he from just being bad to good yeah yeah, I thought it was going to be Dak just through the offense. Yeah. And he had a good season, too. You know who else I was a little concerned for, though? Jamar Chase, because I definitely thought they were going to play the Mac Jones card, bro. I, I wasn't thinking that this I, year. There was no listen, way. Listen, when I saw him at the thing, I said, okay. I said, here they go. They about to try and do this this nonsense. They they trying to make him into somebody he's not. I was like, don't you do this. Don't you do this this year, man. I, I was you definitely just thought the quarterback. Though. I totally. I was scarred by quarterbacks, okay? That's, that's my trauma. Quarterbacks give me trauma. Kyler getting it yeah. over Josh. Yes, Jacobs bro. Was yes. I was just like, I, I was like, yo, it's about to happen again. I, I just, I was preparing myself for it. And then when I saw them cut that camera to that little watch area where the uh, the Bengals were at, I was like, oh, he did it. Because <laughs> you know, I've been in this corner all year, man. Even, even you before him. Fantasy, yeah, right? I must say, I was. I was uh, Cause unless oh, you, you that was you the dude, like, yes. You're like this dude's hands down the number yeah. one prospect coming out. I was like, no yo, I, and, and even before I said, yo, he's better than Justin. He's better than Justin. That's all I kept saying. Yo, he's better than Justin Jefferson, bro. He's better than him. I'm just glad that he held up to it, man. Yeah, he cleans up those drops. Who knows what his stat line? Holy be. cow, bro! Seriously, man. Yeah. yeah, he could be competing with Cooper Cup. Yeah, dude, like, years for like that best season. Cooper Cup, like 
I Yo, looked at the stats. Cubs season was this insane, might have been the best bro. receiver season of all time. Yeah, it Seriously. was insane. Better than AB's, and AB had a crazy year too. AB would have though if Ben just stayed healthy. He would know, he would have had over two thousand. That, that was that was supposed to be the year, bro. That was the year. It's unfortunate. All right, Super Bowl then. We got our picks mm-hmm. already. I guess. Do you want to break down the game? Now let's do it, man. We'll break it down. Yeah, a little. Ah, I got my pseudo breakdowns, but you could go first. Mm. I like how you gonna tell me to go first because I'm drinking my tea over here. You know, I ain't not, I'm not a morning person. Okay, Deke, this is a part of my morning routine. You're not liking these early time slots. Uh, no, I actually hate mornings. Okay, I'm you'll type, like it after though, right? In a sense, what well, not? Well, this is my last when like we're done it like th- no. this is my last like crazy Friday. So I won't actually like it today. Yeah, we got but some going big forward, news for everyone. Yeah, going up, forward, huh? I like it a lot more. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So, but. This Friday is like, ah, oh, no, we still got some stuff on the plate, man. Yeah. But I'm definitely an afternoon guy. You know, in the mornings, I like to kick my feet up, have my bathrobe on, have my nice little cup of tea, sit with wifey, watch something on TV, you know, research a little bit. It just gets the, it sets the day the right way. Trust me, I'm with you. Hey. Getting up and doing all this, it's tough for me. Hey, but yeah, at the man. same time, I do like the whole, <laughs> once we're done, noon. It is a vibe, kinda, though. It it's is a kinda vibe. It's kind of nice. No, absolutely, man. Absolutely. But um, for me, when I think of this particular matchup, uh, I'm excited for the Bengals element of it because they're the young guns. I love watching new talent, new faces, guys that don't know to be afraid, guys that don't know what is significant or not significant. They're just living in the moment because I feel like that's when you're at its purest. That's kind of like the college vibe, the uh, – the high school mentality in the sense of I don't care who has what or all this history stuff like that doesn't apply to any of us. We're just here right now. When I watch that Bengals team, that's how they play. They play really carefree in terms of they're never tight. They never look like, oh, man, looking up at the lights. Now, part of that is because when you talk about Joe Burrow, you talk about Jamar Chase, dudes, they used to play in big, big situations. Even Joe Mixon used to play in big games. So it's like they have players that – their star players in particular have already been on the big stages before, and I do like that part. But then at the same time, when I think of the Rams, you know, I love defense. And when I think of L.A., even though their offense and McVay is out there, I think of their defense first. I think of Aaron Donald, I think of Von Miller, and I think of Jalen Ramsey. And I'm like, man, those three pieces right there can win you a game in their own right because you have a guy that can match with a Jamar Chase where it's not going to get gory either side, right? You got edge rusher and Von Miller versus tackles for Cincinnati that you know struggle. You got Aaron Donald, arguably the best interior defense lineman that we've ever seen play the game, going against an interior part of that Cincinnati Bengals old line that's even worse than the tackles. Yeah. So when I think of just those three guys right there, I'm like, man, that's intriguing because could they win it by themselves if they take over? Like how we saw Denver do when they played Carolina in, right. the, in the Super Bowl, and it was Vaughn and Demarcus Ware – and they could, they did not have an answer for those guys. When I look at the Rams, I'm like, I can see it going that way, and I would love that too. But then I'm also like, all right, what about Stafford? Is he? Because he went from 0-3 in the postseason, and now he's 3-0. and He went from looking like he could never get it done in the bigger moments to now he's showing up in some of these bigger moments. So I asked myself, is this really who he is or is it Cinderella and the slippers about to fall now that all the lights are going to be on all the expectations because this is the game that all those guys were brought out there for because Cincinnati's been through, they built through the draft. So like I said, they're young guys. You don't really think about it. House LA is mercenaries. LA is, I want to get the best players that money can buy. And I only want you for one year rentals. And we're trying to win. A, we're trying to win a championship. And if all I need you for is one game, this is that game right here. This is that one where I need you to come out here and be the Von Miller of old, be the Jalen Ramsey that we went out there and broke the bank for, be the Aaron Donald that we made the highest paid player in the league at a time. Like, this is your game. This is your moment for that. So for me, man, I was just like, man, like the, the contrast of how these teams were built, the contrast of yeah. the star players, the contrast of just L.A. versus Cincinnati, just in terms of the cities. Yeah, like, Cincinnati it's just, gone. and we've been like, we can relate. Like, it is such night and day when you're talking about these two franchises in this matchup. But for me, man, that's what makes it, I guess, more intriguing and more exciting for me. You bring up the defensive line. That's probably my biggest key. Defensive line for the Rams versus the Bengals. Are they going to be making it looking like, well, you brought up the Cam mm-hmm. Newton, 
Panthers versus Broncos back in the day. What was that? Yeah. Holy hell, that's like seven years ago already. I know, right? it's crazy how fast it flew now. But I also think more recently to the Titans-Bengals game in the playoffs mm-hmm. where the Titans were just dominating them on the line and kind of neutralized the yeah. Bengals' offense for most of the game. Now, Burrow still put up some yards, but they were a very bend but dope break defense. Their True. problem was the offense didn't step up. Mm-hmm. In this scenario, you have the Rams' offense with Stafford, Cooper Cup. I don't think that's going to happen to the degree that it happened. With I would agree with that as well. He'll just kind of shit himself there. Uh, so if the D-line for the Rams can get after the Bengals, I could see it being a tough day for them. I really could. Yeah. But if the game's close, here's the here's the other X factor. That's the X factor, I think, for the Rams. I think the Rams' offense will be fine. They'll be moving the ball and stuff. Mm-hmm. Defensive line, if they could get after Burrow and just take over to their offense and neutralize them, then I could see Rams having a big day. Yeah. But the X factor for the Bengals is, is the game just close when it's going into the fourth quarter? That's all it has to be. Because they've been finding ways with Burrow at quarterback, mm-hmm. and I think all the Bengals players believe that mm-hmm. – Hey, no matter how bad this is going, because the Titans game was looking bad, too. Burrow yeah, yeah. was getting sacked left and right. I don't think he's going to blink. So if it's close, if it's like yeah, yeah. even 10 points going into the fourth, you just never know. Uh-huh. You saw the Rams almost fooled to Brady, and Burrow kind of has that similar red factor. I mean, he's still young in his career. I don't want to crown him too early, but yeah. I could see that scenario playing out. Yeah. Well, and I would say this also, man. Um, when you're talking about those guys, I also don't think that, even though since he's line is their weak link, it still doesn't feel as lopsided as Kansas City's O line felt a year ago, where you could really oh, yeah, see Tampa sure. like dominate, You're dominate. 100% right. Even though I think the Rams will be able to win the trenches, I still don't like it could get there, but I don't think it will get to that point where it's just he doesn't have any time to do anything. I think they're good enough that they'll be able to give him some time to operate and things like that. And now, if it keeps it closer going into that fourth, you're good. The problem that they, the, what they can't have happen is this: they get down by two scores and they are forced to drop back yeah. a ton of times. Because now, if you're just telling Aaron Donald and Vaughn to just rush the passer for four quarters or two quarters, that's going to be a nightmare situation for those guys. But at the same time, I flip it as well. Cincinnati defense, low key, all right. Oh yeah, yeah. they got rushers. They 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 got their, their corners. I told you about yeah, losing, absolutely. Man. I, but but I think of like Hilton, Mike Hilton has been playing really well yeah. for those guys. Jesse Bates coming up with big plays as well. They have the pieces and their interior linebackers, man. Logan Wilson, good dude, 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 real good player, man. Solid, absolutely, man. Shout out to the Wyoming linebackers out here, man. So with that though, like I, I'm just like, man, that's why I and that's why part of me is like, man, what Stafford is going to show up? Like Stafford, you're saying the X factor? Yeah, because I'm like. Stafford come out here playing around with that defense. That defense is good enough. Since his defense is good enough to make the Rams work, since his defense is good enough that they can match it with some of those guys out there. Now, I don't think they have an answer for a Cooper Cup, but I think schematically they can do some things to alleviate some of that. And you got a guy like Jesse to take to just keep the top one, the defense as well. For me, I'm like, man, I think they can match it well. Yeah, I wonder how much the Rams are going to be running the ball, too, because mm-hmm. that's something that they can abandon at times. Mm-hmm. Bengals, I could see Bengals them going through Bengals going to the ball. They could. Yeah. They could. It all depends on the game flow. Yeah, so if you feel like you can't pass protect against AD early in the game, what do you do? You run that rock. Make them play the run. Play the run. Von Miller, hey, play the run. Play the run. Because not everybody wants to do that. Part of me thinks, with AD already being in the Super Bowl mm-hmm. a couple years back, losing, having the veteran in like Von Miller. He's ready, bro. I, said, I feel like... Being at home too, I think yeah. is gonna help a little bit. If I'm being like I, completely, I really feel like AD's if I'm being candid about it, man, I don't see the Rams losing this game. Like, really? Honestly, because it's it's that you want to switch your pick. No, I, I I that's why I was like I didn't really care who we picked because I I'm good either way. It's like Cincy, I love the young gun mentality. I love that fearlessness. I love that they don't know what to know. They don't know what to be worried about or who to respect. The Rams, I think of them as man. They've been there and they've tasted their own blood. And there's a difference, man. When you go Everything to that game, has led up absolutely, to this point, right? man. I mean, McVay, the aggressiveness yeah. of getting these guys, and, and very calculated. And you saw even AD as soon as the game was over, he points his finger because he knows, like, man, I got this on my mind because last time I was here, we were, dude. They had, they could have won it last time. They're saying to themselves, man, if yeah. we have a situ, a different quarterback potentially, who knows? Well, Cooks borderline dropped that one too. Yeah, he end, did. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. But it's like. For those guys, they're saying to themselves, like, man, we we had our chance then. We still feel like we should have had that one. 
So now they are extra amped up about it, man. This is the best team that money could buy, right? They're, they're the New York Yankees, essentially, of the league right now in terms of how they have changed their mode of building teams because up until recently, teams weren't building rosters like this. They really came in on some like NBA style. We just acquiring talent at high ends. We don't care what it costs. We don't care about draft picks. It's something that most teams concept is drastically different. So with that, I'm just like, man, it just feels like this is their year. It just feels like it's, man, last year, Tampa, it just felt like it was their year. Oh, Super Bowl's going to be played in Tampa. Brady down there first year. Arians, all this stuff. It just felt storybook. L.A., oh, man, you get Stafford, you trade for him, question marks for him, what can he do? Boy Wonder, McVay, is he still got it? A.D., coming off a down year, what does that look like? You pick up Von Miller, middle of the season. You bring back Eric Weddle. Think about that. Eric He's Weddle's out good. there playing for these dudes, man. Yeah, I'm like, all these things just happening. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's at your home stadium. I just feel like everything is aligned for the Rams to win it. Yeah. The more we talk about it, the more I think about it. Mm-hmm. It is on Stafford. It, it is. Really is. I feel like because it's on think, him largely, man. I think the man. defense will show up for yeah. the most game. Now, does it come down to like a shootout in the fourth quarter? That's like mm. a back and forth thing. You know, that, that's just going to yeah. happen. You know, if teams are trying to score, they spread it out a little bit more. Because I think the yeah. Rams defense, they'll, they'll keep it close for at least three quarters for yeah. sure. What's Stafford going to do, though? Yeah. Is he going to keep them in the game, get them some double digit leads on offense? Mm hmm. Or is he gonna throw him out of the game? He's the one that's like I said. He's the one that I'm concerned about. Like which version of him shows up? Because if he shows up like that fourth quarter against Tampa, oh yeah, that they, that they, wasn't all his fault. That like Cup had no, a really no, no, bad no, 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 no. I said in the like just. Oh, you're talking about the good play? Yeah, I'm talking about like the good like when they were winning it, like like cutting the them up. Like day, I, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Like if it's like that, like yes, I love that version. I think that version they win probably going away. But if it's not that version of the whole time, and obviously we know the receivers have to do their part as well, then, yeah. because yeah, it was a fumble by mm -hmm. the running back, too. I can't remember yeah. if it was Michelle or Akers, but they fumbled it, too. Akers, he had the two fumble. Akers had the one going into the oh, end right, zone, right. he fumbled. Yeah. Yeah, so he fumbled. And he had the one on his head, too. Cop had a bad drop or something, too. So, yes, yeah, so that wasn't all on Stafford. Mm -hmm. Played good in the 49ers game. I mean, down the stretch, <clears throat> mm -hmm. did what he had to do. It was an ugly game. Yeah. So he's proven, <clears throat> me. he's proven a lot this playoffs yeah. right now. But this is this is it. I mean, this is huge. Yeah. This game. This is Without where it gets a doubt, different. Man. I think being at home definitely helps him, though. I would agree 100%. There's no doubt that's got to yeah. help. Could hurt, too, though. Because it's the Super Bowl and all the craziness going on. <laughs> well, from what I'm hearing, the stadium could jack you up. Like if you're not familiar with it, just the expansiveness of it. And I don't mm. think the Bengals have played there yet. Oh, okay. You know, how how pyrotechnics, they got all the lights everywhere and stuff. Hmm. That's what I've heard, at least from some of the podcasts. Like it, it could be jarring at first sight. Yeah, I never you thought about it. it. You know, I, I'm different. Like when we were going to stadiums, man, I'm not looking at that type of stuff. Yeah, going yeah. in, no player's going to say, oh, this is going to mess me up. But yeah. maybe you could look back afterwards and say, yeah, I did kind of feel uncomfortable for yeah. whatever reason. Because I'm trying to, like, even Jerry's world, like, it was more awkward seeing the, the spaceship above it. And I felt like at the beginning of the game you would think about it. But once you start, like, you know, click clacking, causing that, that cloudy with a chance to thaw you out. After that, man, you don't even think about it anymore. That's the thing yeah. that's being Rams' favor, though. Being there, yeah. playing there, what was it, 13, 14 times this mm -hmm. season already? They could get off to maybe a hot start. Yeah. Whereas the Bengals, maybe it takes them a quarter and a half. Yeah. Nah, maybe not a quarter we'll and a half, see, but at least half yeah. a quarter just to get back into it. We'll see. I, like I said, I've never felt like that. That's just me personally, but everybody is different. Like I said, from my experience, it could be because for me, maybe my eyes don't get affected by that type of stuff. Whereas for other people, they might be like, nah, man, like... All that flashing and going around, man, it throws me off. So, yeah. You have any props up? Not yet. No, any? no, not yet. Because I'm still trying to figure out, do I want to parlay any action with my UFC fights this uh, tomorrow and with the big, you know, with the Super Bowl on Sunday? I'm just, I haven't, like, today when I'm done with all my stuff today, that's when I'm really going to sit down and like, all right, we pulling the trigger on this one. This is what we're going to do. So, yeah. I looked some up just for the hell of it. I don't know which ones I want to take, but some of these are fun just because they're neutral, but could keep you like engaged. What you got then? The Let's talk about what you got, man. This one's pretty interesting. Most consecutive completions by either starting quarterback over under six and a half. 
I kind of like that's the over. I that, like that's the a over. Bad number too. That's, I that's hate the, the perfect that, number. That's that is because if it was in five, number. I was like, I would go over five. It's uh, even six. I would go over ah Man. six and a half. I'm like, ooh, you need me to have seven in a row. Ooh, because I feel like bro can do that. I feel like Stafford could do that too. Yeah, they both good. All you need is just a uh, hot little stretch. Yeah. Six and a half. They are, that's a good number. I kind of want to do it just for the hell of it. I would do it. Over is the plus. Yeah, so over is plus I would go over for Burrow. I would go over for Burrow. Okay, so it's either one, though. So that's what helps. Yeah. So it could be if Stafford does it or Burrow. True. All right. Last play of the game to be a QB Neal. Yes, minus 200. No, nope. plus 160. Nope. I don't like it. You don't it. think it will be? I don't like it. You nope. that close? I do. Be I like do. It's Mary, never, it's never a nil. It's, no, I don't see it. Gatorade. Can I get Gatorade back? You're Is getting it? better odds with the no. It's plus 160. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just don't think it's going to be that, man. Okay. So that's a good one. These are all on DraftKings, too, by the way. Sweet. Shout out to DraftKings. Let's get it. Moats promo code. Y'all know. I'll do like two or three more. Joe Burrow plus Stafford over four and a half combined passing touchdowns. So it'd be five three, yeah, total. three for one, two for the other. Honestly, Four for one, one for the other. Whatever. Honestly, I could see that though. Plus one forty five. You're getting favorable odds. I'm just trying to think running game though. That's what I mean. <laughs> you know, it, I could <laughs> see it. I could see, with how these teams play. <gasps> yeah. I mean, Bengals maybe a little bit more balanced than the Rams, mm-hmm. but Rams will run it if it's working. Yeah, they will, yeah, they definitely will. I could see Shoney Michelle coming out of nowhere, even though they have him as a backup. He did well in the But they're, they're, before, not, gonna, they're not running on that. Before. They're not running on Cincy like that. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. Cincy Either defense way, is good. Yeah. I could see Cincy running the ball and like controlling the clock and yeah. it being a little bit of a slug fest. At the same time, I could also see it being a shootout, especially yeah. in the second half. How about this one? Burrow Stafford combined for 450 passing yards plus. Hold on. You say combined? Combined. So 225 apiece. Feet? Hold yeah. on, hold on. This is a big parlay, though. And combined for three plus passing touchdowns, so that's one and a half a piece. Two or no, three and a half. No, three, three, three. three you said plus. it's so, two and a half, right? No, no, no. Three, just three plus. Just three touchdowns. So, plus. so two for need, one, one for the other. So three that will be a push. Do we need to get four total? Cup and Jamar Chase combined for one hundred thirty plus receiving yards. So I love that. Sixty five a piece. I love it more so for Cooper. I'm not sure about Chase just yet. This one's just a crazy parlay. The, Acres plus Mixon, 150 plus combined rushing and receiving yards. This is where it loses me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 150 rushing and receiving total between Acres and Mixon. 150 plus. So they need 150 total yards. 75 apiece, both rushing and receiving. Total yards, like. Yeah. That's the one for me. I'm nervous. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, look at this one. Like they throw in though. They also throw this one in. Total match points under 51 and a half. 26, bro, 25. Why, type about, again. why is this parlay so long, bro? <laughs> Plus 650 on just hitting yes. <laughs> For the odds alone, you have to hit yes. Just hit, just put five bucks. Yeah, That's you can what make I'm like, I don't know what the odds are. That's just like, or what that would get you. But. That is so like, oh my gosh. Oh, I like it though, but man. Okay, I'll do... The, the combined acres mixing is what got me the most nervous. I'll do one more. Will both teams... This is for half, second yeah. half, and fourth quarter. Will both teams have a lead in the first half? Like back and forth. Someone takes the mm-hmm. lead. I know you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking points. about. Yeah. Next possession, seven points. But you said first half, though. But that's first half. And then the other one's second half. See, I like it for the second half. I don't like it for the first half. They have one in the fourth quarter. I yes. like fourth quarter a lot, actually. That's plus 300. Yes. yes. I like fourth quarter a lot. Yes. No, minus 400. It's that fourth quarter one, and yeah. you get better odds. I would definitely like I I do think fourth quarter we will see a lead change. Okay. And it, it's just one, or does it have to be multiple? It just as one. Yeah, both I think we'll teams, have a lead it change. It says both teams will have the lead in the fourth mm-hmm. quarter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, I said that was the last one. How about one more? Let's do it. This one's for Ben. Oh, this one's pretty good. You might like this one. Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, Beckham, and T. Higgins all to each have over 49 and a half receiving yards. I'm worried about Higgins. That's yeah. Uh, that all them dudes ain't getting that, man. I, I wish. I could see Boyd maybe having like a sneaky game. But you know, it's either one or the other with those guys. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's not it would definitely not be. I think Beckham be both. and Cup will. 
Yeah, because for those guys, they're and higher Chase. volume guys too. Whereas, like, if you were throwing Chase, although Chase on Ramsey, that's but that's why when you said the Cooper Cup thing, the combined, that's what I like it because Cup I think is going to go off. Chase I think is it could be a little bit of a slower day for him, but I still think that he's going to allocate a lot of attention. Like they, Ramsey is a dope receiver. I mean, a dope corner. They not just gonna leave Ramsey over there without any type of help versus Chase. I don't care what Ramsey hollering about right now. You saw what the, I didn't see. Did strike he do an interview? No, he didn't. But I'm just saying, like Chase one on one, he's gonna win his times. That's that's all I'm saying. He's gonna win his match. Like Jalen is gonna have success, but Chase gonna have success. And the difference is when Chase has his success, you know, it's gonna be explosive. Ramsey's game is it either one of the best? cornerback performances in the Super Bowl of all time or is he getting torched like two or three times and everyone is just shitting on him on Twitter if if they go out there and, and, and match up I Ramsey think, if they, it's, listen, it's either one or the other if, if they go out there and match up Ramsey one on one with Jamar Chase for four quarters and no safety help strike up you the band you Burrow just throws it up to Chase that, and that's too. why I said you strike up the band because yes okay yes he is going to do that and, and like I said Ramsey's going to win. Ramsey's going to win his fair share. But the problem is this. When Ramsey wins a rep, it's not the same level of impact as when Chase wins a rep. Think about this. Man, they could have 10 reps in a row. Eight of them, Ramsey can, you know, jam them up at the line of scrimmage, push them out of bounds, just lock them up, PVU, whatever. But it doesn't impact points. It doesn't impact momentum to that extent. Whereas all it takes is two times of Jamar makes a miss. And now it's an 80 yarder. It's a 60 yarder. You know, it's one of them feel flipping, exciting. Oh my God. Yeah, man. That's what. Mm. I think for these props, what I'm thinking about is just having 50 bucks for the mm. Super Bowl and then just divvying it up amongst those bets. Yeah. Out. As long as I break even at the end of the day, I'd be happy. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. Because I don't know which one's the pick from these. I think I might just spread it out amongst all of them. But, hey, man, Ramsey could have one of them games, though, where he get like, three picks. That's what I mean. Because he's he going to play the ball. That's the other part. Yeah, he I is going to play the ball. having lockdown performance. Even if he doesn't get a pick, Chase, like, 10 yards. Yeah, he, he's go, he, he plays that ball. on the ball other side, well, I can see man. Chase, 152 <laughs> critical Glory. plays in the Glory. second half. <laughs> yeah, Glory. Yeah, and just everyone's going after Ramsey on Twitter. <laughs> Gory, and they go pull up that list where he was like, "Yo, this quarterback suck. That quarterback suck. Even though Burr isn't even up there, and it's gonna be Burrow, Cartier's. You know, you know how he do Cartier's yeah, and cigars, you're see the man. Name of Burrow holding yeah, like a it's... baby with Ramsey's uh-huh. face. You know how it's gonna go, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's is that it for the Super Bowl. Uh, it is, man. So yeah, I think we got um couple super or maybe one super that just popped up. You get that, I and after that, it. you can or you you I said you can't. can't. No, okay. It's not right. here. Oh, perfect. Here we go. Juice box. So, juice box 32, just simply saying in all caps, smash that like button with, you know, the nucks, a couple likes, thumbs up. And then he also says, how many picks do we actually have this year in terms of the draft? What? Is this like a riddle? Is he? No, I think he was just asking. I don't know. Should we look at it? I was just saying, Google What's it. What's the guess? Yeah. Uh, is he asking about comp picks? Maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, can I take a guess? Take a guess. What you we think? Got seven rounds. Well, we've traded picks. That's a what? I'm going to go with four. Four picks total. No, uh, nah, we got five. I'll say six. Let's see what it says, man. Yeah. For 2022. <clears throat> uh, this is a full. This might be a full mock draft. Hold on, hold on. All right, all right. Come on. Yeah, hold on. Ready? Six. We have two seventh rounders. Oh, First, second, seven. third. So we got our top right, three. Right. We don't have a fourth and fifth. Mm-hmm. We have a sixth and two seventh. Got you. Okay. At least we got our top three. Yeah, that's all we need, man. That's all we need. Seriously. Four and five. Just make sure we hit on them, man. That's all we it need, though. Crap shoot. Uh, it's good we have the sixth rounder, too. You know, yeah. sixth rounders should be... Big time. No, absolutely. And he did say it was a genuine question. So there we go. We got your answer right there. So that's that's how many draft picks we got. That's actually good to know. I, I ain't looked at it to that point just yet. All right. And you get this last super. And then after that, man, we'll go to this next topic. Jamar Chase versus Ramsey is the matchup that got me hyped. Let's see Ramsey offer a hand slap to Jamar like Dion did with Rice. Mm. You know what he's talking about, right? I know the two players, obviously, Dion and Rice. I don't know what happened. Did something happen in the Super Bowl? 
um, I don't know if the game was a Super Bowl, but they oh, would no, talk about like some of the matchups. NFC yeah, championship maybe. Yeah, but they were um, just one of the matchups they were always they were about to go into. Uh, I believe Jerry comes out, then he goes to shake his hand, and Deion like smacks it away, and he's getting ready to like line up and go at it, and then you see them like battling, battling like throughout the game and stuff like that. It, it was dope, man. Do you know what happened about that Crabtree Sherman thing back in the NFC Championship? Yeah, what about it? Because you remember Sherman? I'm saying he's like when you go at the best, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. and he just. This uh, was good when you got him at the best with a with a with a scrub like Crabtree because it was the same thing, mm. not the same thing, but apparently Sherman yeah offered Crab. Did you hear about this? Sherman offered mm-hmm. Crabtree his hand at like some type of party in the off season, and yeah. Crabtree denied it. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe he did again before the game, and he, he denied took it, again. it like yeah, and then the, literally like the last play of the game. He gets the, the PBU. It up to grab treat, right? Yeah, then, yeah, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, the backstory is amazing. He was pissed. I still, I don't blame Sherman. Then at I still all. try that's to awesome. find a backstory though for uh, a key to leave and um, Michael Crabtree in the, the sense chain. of like why did he snatch it the first time? Like I right. get it the second time, and that's why the second time it was like Crabtree, bro, you need to check your 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 cloth. You're looking a little, 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 you know, a little tampered, a little, little counterfeit over there. <laughs> But it's like, man, the first time, like, why why did you grab it the first go around? It was just like heat of the moment. We battling, and I just, yeah. I can't remember. But that was yeah. actually in the video I was watching about the crab tree. I was bored the one night and nah. looked up, like, top 10 beefs. In That's NFL. funny, man. And that was in it. I forget that what the reasoning funny. was. Yeah, I, I want to know, like, what would happen. Like, yeah. Well, I caught up on the Super Chats. I like it. All right, so now let's have a little bit more fun with today's show because, um, what we've been doing, uh, and shout out to everybody in the chat. Y'all been amazing with this. I've been asking you guys that, hey, man, any prospects you want us to talk about on the show to just send an email to Motes's winners, Motes, my last name, winners, in terms of we're all winners, W-I-N-N-E-R-S, at gmail.com to let me know which prospects you like, which prospects you want me to look at and talk about. And today we're going to be focusing a lot more on the offensive line, but these are prospects that we'll be talking about that have all been emailed on numerous occasions from you guys in the chat, man. So big time shout out to y'all for that. And like I said, anybody that, you know, or if you have other prospects you want us to look at and talk about, we'll continue to do this leading all the way up into the draft, all right? So it doesn't matter if it's somebody big school, small school, early draft, late round, whatever. If you want us to check them out, just send an email. Email once again is my last name, Motes, and then it's winners, all right, at gmail.com. Send it in there, and after that, man, we'll check it out. But on um, the first guy we want to talk about today is Tyler Lindenbaum. The, the, the guy everyone's talking the, about. The, the, the guy that has become the second coming of Mike Webster, the second coming of Marquise Pouncey, Damani Doss, I mean, or Damani Dawson, I mean, wh- whoever else is all the time great center, this kid right here, they are already putting that stamp on him. Um, For me, I like the kid a lot. I'm not going to lie. When I watch him on tape, um, I think that even though he is – smaller in terms of your traditional lineman size in terms of like height and weight six three two ninety he's still good size for the center position right and he is a true center he's not a converted guy he's not a guard he's not a tackle that moonlights as a center like no he is a center exclusively i like that a lot about him i think he's super athletic and rangy too dude like you watch well. him man you watch him when he's pulling you watch him when he's climbing to the second level He's athletic. The same things that we talked about in the positive light with Kendrick Green in terms of how he, his mobility, right, getting on the perimeters. Tyler uh, Lindenbaum does that at an extremely high level, and he just has a lot more natural size and strength to go with it. I also think that, man, in terms of his, like, hand placement, footwork, he's very fundamentally sound. I think one of his best attributes is how consistent he is with that. You watch him when he hits people. What do you see? Them feet start rolling. You see his little hand and I'm like, all right, I like that because those are the things that help you win at the second level. Those are the things that help you win at the NFL level because as a defender, as soon as contact hits me, I'm already escaping. I'm already thinking, okay, get my feet hot. I'm knocking these hands off me. As an offensive lineman, you have to make sure that your feet get rapidly hot, you know, because that's going to keep you in position. That's not going to allow me as a defender to escape one side or the other. And then with his hands just being inside, you're controlling that stern wheel. But for me, when I see him, he always – finishes in those positions and i just think that's something that definitely carries over and why he's viewed as this top prospect even talking with the guys at pff you know i'm not a pff guy but you know at times i have to talk to the pff people 
I mean, they talk about why he's their highest rated center ever in terms of like prospect ever. coming out. They've never had a center prospect rated like him. Not even um yeah, they said like literally nobody. He's the best rated when center did PFF prospect. Start? Um I think he said what? It's been around for twenty? All right, so this dude yeah. gonna be better than Creed Humphrey then. That, no, that's what they say, like without a doubt. That's what they're saying. But now when I watch him on tape, I like that a lot. Um in terms of if I would say a negative, that's interesting because Creed Humphrey went second round. Why weren't we talking yeah. about him last year? Like, and he was right one of the top three right. rookies in the class this year. Absolutely, so, man. man. Do you think this guy's that much of a slam dunk? Because some of the other stuff I'm hearing is like he's he's like really solid. That's mm-hmm. the thing about him. Like he could help. He has great mm-hmm. hand movement, but maybe some of the lower mm-hmm. body strength is the thing that he's well, lacking. Because I was about to say, I was go- like some of the negatives that I had. I said he's not overly strong. Like he has the size and his effort definitely helps him a lot more but he's not like you watch some of these other guys on tape when they get hands on guys it's like yo he's just throwing this dude ragdoll you don't see a lot of ragdoll you see a lot of just great finishes but it's more so because of the fundamentals they keep him in place but he's not overly strong i also don't think that his grip is the best either because even though he does a good job of keeping his feet moving and his hands and trying to finish you still can see versus some of the better competition, they can get his hands off of him. And to me, that goes back to just your grip. When I think of Pouncey, when Pouncey's hands were fine before he started having all the cuts and tape and all that stuff, it's like you weren't seeing guys, once he grabbed them, get back off of that. It was, yo, I got you, you're mine now. Whereas at times I have seen with Tyler where guys are still kind of able to get those hands off because it's not a crazy strong grip. That's because he's not a crazy just strong upper body guy he just is really fundamentally sound and i think the effort he plays with makes up for those things yeah i was hearing that since he was in college he didn't have to face a dude like casey hampton or correct some type of yeah cause it was a lot it was a lot gonna... more four threes in, instead of three fours but yeah. some are thinking that could be the concern mm-hmm. coming into the nfl like if you just get a huge dude defensive tackle they could just mow him yeah. over well now, i don't want to see those concern... type of scenarios again we, because... we already saw that all this year yeah now i would say this though um the, the reason why I think it's different between Tyler and uh, Kendra Green is this. Number one, even though Tyler isn't the biggest guy, I still feel like he's naturally bigger in terms of his body type yeah. compared to Kendra Green's body type. I also think that he is more fundamentally sound than Kendra, um, than Kendra Green as well. And I think he's currently stronger. Like when we talk about Kendrick, like Kendrick doesn't punch big. And he doesn't have like crazy drive in his legs. Whereas when you watch Tyler, like I think Lindenbaum's yeah, arms he's, are better too. Right? Yes, They're that's what I'm saying. So sure. it's like Tyler's makeup of his body is still better. Like I said, he's a smaller lineman, but he's still good size for the center position. But when you talk about the effort and the technique coupling it together, it that's why he's talked about so much. That's why they project that he could be really good in terms of his transition to the next level. I don't want to crown him to that extent the way that people have crowned him because I do think part of it is, man, we know we have a need at center. We know that this guy is look dominant. He's definitely the best center right, prospect right. in the whole, oh, it's Iowa. You know, you go to Iowa, you get your, you know, that's the, that's the O-line factory and all this other stuff. And I feel like it kind of gets it even crazier. But I do think he is a really, really good talent. Like, What does I, he got to do? He just got to put on strength. Well, honestly, that's the part for me where I, I'm interested to see, like, is he already strong enough that he could get it done? Or, like you said, does he need to get strength? Because I do think this, um, if he's going to be matching up against, like, nose tackles, like in terms of zero techniques, Casey Hampton types, I don't know if he'll be strong enough in that vein because the difference is this. When he's in that, when he's facing a 4-3 and he's not covered up, he's climbing up to linebackers or he's working the guards, so he has chance, he has time to get his legs moving. He has time to allow his momentum to help him out because I say he's not overly strong. When you have a nose technique, a zero over you, as soon as you snap that ball, now it's arms on arms. It's, let me see, can I throw you or you, can you throw me? And then I got to get those feet moving after the fact. So it's just a different style of him being able to use his assets, him being able to use his momentum the way that he's been doing it. And that is something that we just haven't seen. So that's why I'm like, I really can't speak on does he need to get stronger or not because I just haven't seen that point. look just yet. Yeah, maybe he could surprise us yeah. and handle it. Mm-hmm. In the next level, how would you yeah. feel if we took him in the first round? Um, I, I, like I'm fine with it. Put him? it like this: I'm fine with it. I just don't want to move up to get him. Yeah, because I've seen him going anywhere between like ten and us twenty. 
but I've seen him linked to Baltimore. I've seen him linked to, uh, oh my goodness, it was another team as well. Um, the Giants. There were another team they was linked to where they were talking about just the whole center position. I think the Jets might have been another one that are all picking in that same time frame because he's definitely good. And like I said, I definitely think that he would help our old lineman out like a lot, a man. Out there. He is. He definitely is. But for me, like I said, I just want to see him versus some zero techniques because we just haven't seen it. That's all. Yeah. Is yeah. that it for uh That is though for for Lindebaum, man. Absolutely. Now he's definitely in the first round category as well because we wanted to got to clarify those guys. We as draft well, man. him, what do we do? All right, so put it like this. If we draft him, I'm trying to see if I can get any of those quarterback prospects in that second round. Who is available? Did Malik drop out? Did Oh, you really feeling quarterback now? Well, in the sense of if I got my center and I don't anticipate us making this crazy move free agency wise for a quarterback, I'm still going to want to bring somebody in. And I don't want to wait to the middle or the end of the draft to bring somebody in if I'm rolling out there with Mason Haskins. So I'm looking to see of my top tier guys, right? Because Kenny Pick is not going to last that long. But Malik Willis, Sam Howe, Desmond Ritter. I'm saying of those three, did any of those guys last into the second? Because if they did, the value goes up a lot more in the second round versus when you're talking about picking these guys at 20 in the first round. We might have to trade up in the second for Potentially, them. Potentially, yes. Yeah. Potentially. But that's something that I would kind of think of. And then from there, you know, if that didn't work, well, now I'm sweating a little bit because now I'm saying, well, dang, I really have to go this model of hit on these other side positions since I'm not going to have the quarterback that I want right now. Right. Yeah. It all depends on what we do in free agency. Mm -hmm. What do we do with green? Just competition for guard then? Yeah, I'm fine with that. We man. can't just have him be back up center. We spent a third yeah. round pay. At least just put him in competition. Yeah, work he, out. compete, man. Absolutely compete and yeah, made the best have man him win. Slug it out the whole season, then maybe you cut him after that. Yeah. If he's just a backup. No, without a doubt, man. That's kind of what my thought process would be with him, man. Yeah, it's yeah. got to this point though, where we got to spend a third yeah. round pick last year. Now a second or potentially a first round pick. Right, on man. Bomb. That's where we're at. Yeah, I don't think that should like if you make a bad pick. I don't think that should deter you from picking in the same position and try to like, no way, we picked him third round. Let's keep yeah. trying it, keep trying it. Nah, yeah. If it's not working, if you really like this guy, because it does seem mm-hmm. like he's really good, yeah. just a, a few things with the strength that we talked about, yeah. pick him. Yeah, I, I, I would agree, man. To post that. Depends on who's agree. on the board maybe at the time, but center, Tyler Lindenbaum, sounds like a good pick to me. Yeah. Because like who, else, said, like, we who are we going to pick up in free agency that's like center, tackle, no, or anything the, like that? Nobody this the market, yeah. I feel, feel like, is just not that good for offensive linemen. It's not right now. But obviously, I mean, we'll see in terms of if there are any other surprise releases in terms of cap casualties and stuff like that. That can change some stuff. But right now, that's a big reason why Tyler I know Tyler's, it's bad for yeah. tackles. But I don't mm-hmm. know what it's like for centers. So maybe yeah. that's something I got to look into more. But yeah. you're probably at least playing a good center, like $10 million bucks, yeah. where you could get this guy. It's I'm gonna be your starter right away. Yeah. For rookie contract, what would it say gonna be like six a year or something? Seven, yeah. Maybe? But way cheaper either way. Yeah. So we'll be good there. But that's the, the the breakdown on Tyler. The next one because we got we got four other guys I want to talk about um, is uh, Jamari Sell. Uh, I think I say Sellier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, out of the University of Georgia. Now this dude he's interesting because he's shorter, right? I've seen him anywhere between 6'2 and 6'4. I, I don't know how he... He looks huge. He does. But I'm like, I don't... But I, I personally think it's like the arms. His arms are like crazy long, bro. But he's played guard and left tackle. He started uh, the 2020 season the whole year he played guard. This national championship season for them, the whole year he was at left tackle. He looked good at both of them, oh, if I'm being real really about it. Good at left tackle. Yeah, he looked good either way. For me personally, I think he's built more like a guard. I think he's a bigger a body guard. He's built like a bigger body guard, but I definitely think he, number one, is super athletic. I love his footwork. I think he has very quick feet. I like his hands. And the fact that when you watch him, he doesn't just do traditional double punch. He's not a traditional two hand work together guy he works with independent hands in the sense of man he'll have times where he's just jabbing the guy right here or he's controlling the guy one hand and the difference between when we talked about tyler and i was like with linderbaum i said he is a two-hand technique get his feet rolling not overly strong jamari is different jamari is that type of freakish strong where he's ragdolling guys and he's holding them like you plays very physical he finishes he can move good too. and he times the snap extremely well you watch him he's never the last guy off the ball 
And with some of these other prospects, we talk about them, they are a little bit lackadaisical or not as consistent getting off the ball. We talk about that get off where you're like, man, is that a false start? Jamari has that and he has it timed up perfect pretty much every single time. Now, the a uh, couple of things I like about him is this. I think his footwork is really good. I think that he also has the hot feet on contact. We talked about with Tyler in terms of as soon as he gets hands on, boom, 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 feet get the rolling. And the positional flexibility, because I do think at the NFL level, he can be a left tackle or a guard, and you would be happy. Instant upgrade over Dan Moore if we take him left tackle? I think at either spot. I think you could put him at, at guard or tackle, and he is going. you're going to feel his impact. I, I do think he's that good of a player. Um, some of the things that I questioned with him or that I have a little bit of concerns, or not, they're not over con- like overly concerns, but things that I would critique or just get him to clean up a little bit. He is a little bit of a waist bender. And what that means is this. He drops his head at times versus bending his knees to lower his level. Sometimes we tell a tall person, hey, man, get low. They think just drop my head down, bend forward. And it's like you bend forward, but you put yourself in a bad position because now you can't move you laterally. Like short stuff. Right. Position. Right. So you want to squat a little bit more. So those are some of the things that he needs to work on just to get a little bit more consistent there because that does pop up at times. And I think that because of that, it makes him at times struggle with speed rushers. So if his technique is clean and he's using, you know, he's keeping his head out of it, punching, good knee bend, good hips, you know, stuff like that. I think that he handles speed perfect because of how he works with the independent arms I was talking about in terms of driving guys to the ground, running guys past the quarterback on the arc. Where he struggles, though, is when he does not hit with the independent hand and he drops his head thinking that, oh, I can get this contact. And now that's when you really see him kind of look out of whack a little bit, just not smooth at times because he's dropping that head and all this weight and momentum is going forward. So that would be one of the things that I would try to critique with him. But depending on who our O-line coach is, you know. Maybe they get that up out of him. If it's Mike Munchak, I'm not worried about that at all because I know he coaches that up out of him. Because it's it's an easy fix in the sense of we're not talking about, hey, we got to get your, 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 your steps right. We got to get your base right. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about we got to teach you how to punch. We're just talking about, hey, man, keeping your head out of it. And you do a good job of it most of the time. But because it does pop up. Me as a defender, when I watch him on tape, I watch him in the sense of, okay, what does he do well? What do I think he would make me struggle with? And then I say, well, what could I take advantage of him with? And those are some of the things when you watch him, it's like, that would be that would be how I would attack him. Yeah. You mentioned the word smooth. I watched yeah. him against Alabama in the mm-hmm. SEC championship game, and that's what I thought the whole time. Yeah, I'm that. like, I don't know how he's doing it, mm-hmm. but he's basically locking off this edge rush. Dude, and it was time. Will Anderson. And Will, was, Will, yeah. Will, Will, to me, was the best edge rush. I liked him a little bit better than the Oregon guy, and I liked him better than uh, than Aiden out in Michigan. And he handled him well. The, the one time he got in trouble, though, he dropped his head. And after that, you saw Will use his speed. Other than that... It was good. I think I I'm not saying because it was like the uh, all the uh, it, it was like the like, all, all yeah. running pass plays right, but folks on the nice. O line, yeah, that's the type of stuff we're talking about. Yeah, give absolutely. Us, give us that type of that, stuff. That's what great. I look for. I'm like, yo, it's per- it took like it 15 great. minutes, but it was all just O line D line. Like it's hyper focused right there. No they replays, replay. no flush. No, they show a replay of, of the, the big plays. Yeah. yeah, but other than that, it was like you're right here. You're seeing exactly what you want to see. Yeah, I love that man. It was good. Yeah, I thought he was really good. I don't know where people have him. Projected I've right now because I'm trying to look. Everyone's so got him guard. I don't know if they got him in the tackle. Well, put it like this: I've seen him just linked in terms of draft stock anywhere between like, excuse me, second round and third round. Like oh, I've seen him in that stealing. range, right? And that's why when I think of him, I'm like, now, granted, we know when he tests, that's going to change some stuff. We know when teams start to say, hey, well, if we really need him as a guard, can he be that guy? That could change him in terms of potentially going earlier than that. But from what I saw, I saw second and third round grades for him right now. What do you think it is? Why do people have him lower? Because I don't um, really see that much downside. You talk about the honestly, negative. That's pretty easy. He looked good to me. Honestly, man, I, I don't know. Because if you're talking about him as a left tackle, he is shorter. If he's if it is if six it's two, six two, right? because I saw him literally it was like six two and three quarter inches, and I'm right. just like, bro, that's a short left tackle, like. Kelvin Beecham, for example, when he would be out there at tackle, we're like, Beach is a short tackle, but Beach is fundamentally sound. Beach understands how to use his leverage, and Beach uses his quickness to his advantage. I'm like, man, but other than that, you don't really see a lot of guys under 6'3", 
three, six, four out there because that's just a short guy. Their arms typically aren't long enough. And when you're talking about the defenders they're going to be going against, you I mean, for every one of me, the rest of these dudes out there is bare minimum six four. When you start talking about them six, 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 seven, it's just the length, the length, they can't account for that. That's where those guys typically go into the guard position. So that could potentially be part of it. Um, maybe watching more of it if he has more of the waist bending on tape then coming to the two or three games that I watch if that is more prevalent that could be a part of it as well but for me man I, I'm surprised because That's I think he's really easy, good dude right? absolutely man especially if we get a good coach and yeah. hopefully Munchak yeah I'd be happy man. to take him in the second or third round yeah without a doubt man go. without a I was doubt. just wondering like you know more we drafted him in the fourth round last mm -hmm. year obviously you look at any highlight tapes yeah and stuff, they're gonna look good but with him being a fourth round pick and a year under our system, I wonder how much of an upgrade a rookie would be right off mm -hmm. the bat. You think he'd be like instant? Impact. I think he would because I think he's more. Well, even, cause, can we do him at right tackle? See, that's the thing. I I just haven't seen it's him more, on tape uh, there. Moore was all left tackle yeah. in college, too. and that was the thing. Like, weren't we trying him at right tackle in the preseason? I we I felt like we did. And then when Bannon we came back, that's when we brought him over. Yeah, we had Chooks at left. And yeah, then it was like Moore and Banner mm -hmm. at right. And then like when Banner team. never came, because Banner played in the game, the the preseason game, and after that was gone, and that's when they flipped those two dudes. Maybe that could be. Yeah. Maybe more over at right. Maybe because, like I said, man, I personally think that uh, Jamari, man, like in terms of just athletic ability, I think he's more athletic than Dan Moore. I think he's stronger than Dan Moore, and I guess I just like how he works with his arms in terms of not just solely being locked into one style of punching like he has good job he does a good job like i said with his feet and things like that as well but i just think man his fundamentals and in, in the hand placement it really jumps off the tape to me yeah yeah next one next one on the list though Kenyon green potentially the new kg okay now now kg <laughs> Kenyon green played at texas a&m with our current left tackle, Dan Moore. Yeah. Now, with Kenyon Green, I also like him because he wears number 55. Yeah. 55 is a dope number. Now, this dude, without a doubt, surefire, he's first-round prospect. I personally feel like still if, if he can fall into the second, that's the steal of all stuff. I just don't see it. I mean, you talk about the size, 6'4", 325. Big-time difference, right? So, you think about this. This is a guard. And I'm saying 6'4", 325. So now when you hear me say Jamari Slayer or uh, Sellier at left tackle being anywhere 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", I'm like, that's short to be out there. You know what I mean? Even Tyler Linham, I'm 6'3", but he's 290. It's like, man, when you think about this dude right here, I love his size. Like, awesome frame. I think, man, some of the things that he thrives in is pulling you watch him on tape that's the first thing that jumps off athletic as heck but he can pull man he runs really well i think he's super physical in the pass game and in the run game i just like to do a lot i think that he finishes like you watch he drive guys to the ground he's strong um he's even played center but i do feel like he's a natural guard if that makes sense like he could go in there and be his team starting center right now like, if we were to draft him, we could put him at Didn't center. he play tackles, too? Yes. Like, he's literally played, it's like, almost every position. Like, he's that type of guy because of the athletic ability, because of the size that he has. And, like I said, he's just super fundamental. But for me, if we, like, for example, and I think, if like, if we were taking him, because, like I said, man, and, and I'm so happy that y'all brought him up because I wouldn't have never even thought of him in that sense. So big time. I forgot We'd which. We'd have to take him at 20. Right? Yeah, I forgot which of uh, the people in the chat actually sent him uh, in the email list. But um, but with him, even if you put him at center early on, he's still going to be an upgrade. You're still going to feel good. Your running game is going to look good. He's going to be that menace that you want. You know, we talk about like this year. It was like, man, we didn't really have like that goon, that, that guy that's like, hey. Watch out. No. That's not the guy. You don't want to mess with him. Like, I feel like he could bring that, you know? But then I also say that you could put him at a guard spot and he's going to thrive as well. And when you have a guy that could play right side or left side like how he can, the the position flexibility, all the things that he brings to the table is just it's a huge asset. And that's what makes him such an intriguing player as well. Man, when you get guys his size that can move the way that he moves, that's that's difficult to handle as a defender. 
you don't want to see that in space on a pool. Like, man, you watch him on some of these screenplays, some of these outside runs, and I'm thinking to myself, what if Najee is running behind that? What if he's out there picking up a guy on the, on the perimeter while Deontay is cutting back across the field? Like, that's what he's that's what he brings to the table. I think of, man, what if, you know, we're matching up with some of these AFC North teams that want to play, you know, good defense. We got to run the ball. He is a people mover. He is going to take two hands and he's going to drive. He's going to win grass. And that's the other thing. When you watch his tape, it's times, man, you'll see everybody else getting beat. And he's he's sending his guy this way. Everybody else is going that way. You're like, oh, he's different. Yeah, his tape don't look like everybody else's tape out here. Yeah. Here's what I got for him. Dude just looks like he loves football. Ooh. Am I wrong on that? Absolutely, dude. As soon as he the ball does, snaps, bro, he as does. soon as the ball snaps, he's looking like mm-hmm. I want to hit someone. I can't wait. He's mm-hmm. he knows where to go, the exact spot yeah. where he's gonna just yes. drill this guy, and he yes. does that. Yes, bro. I really like the uh, yeah. You're right. The athleticism. This is something I heard. Maybe you could attest this. Low mm-hmm. pad level. Yeah. So knee bender, good hips, good pad level, not waist bender trying right. to get low. Night already, and day. He already got that. Take Absolutely. Care. And that's why I'm a lot more higher on him, though, compared to when I was talking about Jamari. I'm like, I can understand potentially why he could be second or third if that if there is more of that on his tape. And this dude looks more athletic. Yeah. Than no, he's freak. Too. He's but freakishly I, I athletic. Taylor man. moves well, though. He does, though. He definitely does. Yeah. But for me, when I look at this dude's size, like he looks like an NFL starter, whether you're talking Un, a little bit shorter left tackle, but great size guard. Like, this is a big dude. Like, imagine Ramon, but just ultra athletic. That's what it looks like at times when I'm watching. I'm like, bro, you are massive. You should not be able to move like that, man. Yeah. The only downside that I saw mm-hmm. is someone brought up some tape of him getting pushed back pretty bad. Like, yeah. Kendrick <clears throat> Green getting pushed back. So... He's had maybe man, we're I, we're just taking shots at Green. Yeah, I, I would say I, I'm not going there. I'm not going to keep doing this. But we got the new KG right here because his last name is Green as well. See, they could both have Green. It'd be like K dot. Oh, dude, they would both have to have three letters because Kendrick K E. It's close. So he would have to be K E N dot Green, and Kendrick <laughs> oh, Green would cool. be K E dot Green because they're both K E K E. Right. So you'd have to go to the third letter for him. That'd be cool for Jersey. That would be, bro. <laughs> or maybe Kendrick is just regular green, and then him is right, K-Dot right. Green, whoever, yeah. Maybe something like that. Something. Maybe one of them yeah. would throw the senior on there. Yeah, but I will say this, man. Um, For the one or two times that I did see him get pushed back, I didn't think of it as something that I would be worried about happening more consistently. I looked at it more so as wow. at times he might have got caught off guard. In the sense of you're expecting this type of rush, you're expecting this type of play, and a guy does something totally different. That um, The other thing I was saying to myself was just like, man, I wish, you know, when these guys at times try to, like, jump to, like, bat balls down, that he would, you know, do them a little bit dirtier. He he, he don't he do not do them. I want to see them done just yet, but that can get taught to him as well. In the sense of typically with offense linemen, any of my old linemen know, when a, a, a defender jumps, you're supposed to make them remember to never want to jump again. However, you need to do that, but that's what you do. You know, you make sure them hands never go up like that again. You make sure he's very aware or he's going to give him some space next time. I just feel like I want to see a little bit more of that, oh, okay. a little bit better version of that. That's okay. all. That's all. But yeah, I definitely like him a lot, though. Like, he was, yeah, I honestly, he good too. As, as much as people love Tyler Lindenbaum, and I get it, and I understand why we would want to draft him, to me, I like this is the guy. That's how I feel about Kenyon, personally. Okay. Zion Johnson? Yeah. Now, Zion, man, he's an interesting guy to me, man. Um, Left tackle, uh, Boston College. He's another one. He's a little bit shorter at the tackle spot, but he still meets the prerequisite. He's 6'3", 316, though, so pretty good size. But also position flexibility. Uh, During the senior bowl for him, he took reps at center. Now, I definitely think he is more of a natural guy on the perimeter, but he did take snaps in there on the interior part of it. It was kind of mixed bag to me. Um, But – A lot of times when I'm watching guys that don't play center, try to play center, you're going to get the mixed bag of are they going to be too worried about protection so the snap is all over the place, or are they so worried about the snap that the protection is all over the place. And with him, it was pretty much the I'm worried about the snap, so my protection, one rep might look really good, one rep might look really bad, so I really couldn't evaluate him as a center from the clips that I was seeing at the senior bowl. Why they do that just because he's undersized? Um, Yeah, and... No, it's not a lot of like natural centers that are like 
to that level, I guess. You know what I mean? In terms of that coming out. So that's part of the reason. Because Zion, it was Zion. It was a couple other guys they did that with at the senior bowl where they would put them, whether they were natural tackles or guards, they would put them on the interior at center and have them just snapping to see if they could do it. But like I said, so for me, man, I don't personally like them in there just because I couldn't really evaluate it like that. Right. But if a team is looking and they think that they could develop it, I get it because he does have that same size. We talk about Creed, 6'3", 290. This dude's 6'3", 316. So he's definitely a bigger body player, right? But some of the things that I love about him, his his punch. It's one of the strongest punches I've seen in this draft class. Like When he puts those hands on people, you see them react. You see them stop. He wins a lot early as well in terms of his jump set he's a guy that he wants to get you get these hands on you in a hurry and at excuse me i said left guard now i don't know why i said attack a left guard excuse me on that one but um he gets his hands on players early and he controls them he anchors down he drops his base and from there man them inside hands boom he'll sit there everybody else is rushing he's right here with this dude like where we at we dancing today. We chilling. Like, that's what he brings to the table. I also think that he is a very physical guy with good short area movement. I don't like him as a puller. I don't really like him a ton in space. But in terms of the short area as a guard, I think that he moves really well. I think that he can handle a lot of, you know, different style rushes and stuff like that. I also think that he has nice hot feet and active hands. In terms of you watch him at times, man, he'll punch and miss. He does a good job replacing, though. You'll see him maybe late in terms of getting his hands to the steering wheel, in terms of the inside hands on the breastplate, right? He does a good job of re uh, taking them off, putting them back on. He he's active with his hands in that sense. But I do think at times he plays a little top-heavy. So when I said was that Jamari was a, a little bit of a waistbender, yeah. this guy, he isn't full waistbender, but I feel like... He likes to like get a, a full body lean. And I don't know if it's because he's not as strong or what, but he leans a lot. And when he's off, oh, it's like timber. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah. you'll see him struggle with movement, like redirection, guys that are working across his face. So if a guy is on, you know, if the center is right here and he's the guard right here, if a guy's over here and he's crossing his face because he's so heavy headed, leaning hard. If he miss, it's like a bad whiff. That's okay, some that of the stuff. Sense. Yeah. That's with some of the videos that I was watching. Mm -hmm. with That's why it always didn't look the prettiest yeah. whenever they're running the ball and he's trying to Right. Because he, he'll he get like that. And I also feel like, and, and that happens a lot in the run game. I feel like in pass game, though, in the pass protection, he gets straight-legged as well. I don't like that because your initial punch is great. And if he hits it and he wins, he wins and it's clean. But when he's straight-legged and he doesn't win in a hurry – as an edge rusher, or even just a, a interior rusher, once I go to my counter, once I go to my next move, that straight leg, you're not going to be able to react. You're not going to be able to get back in position or stay in position. And those are some of the things that I think hurts him in pass pro. And that's why, like, when I watch him, I'm like, I think that he could be a good player, but he's definitely going to need a little bit more refining with some of that stuff right there with him. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at here. Looks like his ceiling's a little bit capped. Yeah. Better as a pass protector. Mm -hmm. And then running, you're right. He doesn't really have that same athleticism as some of the other yeah. dudes that we were talking about. But what I, what I like about all these linemen that we're looking at, mm -hmm. eh, maybe outside of Linderbaum because he felt kind of more like a technician. All these dudes have like a main streak, man. They like, do. They do. Heck, yeah, they do. That's the one Heck, thing. Like, yeah, even, do, with, man. even if we could say with him, oh, man, not athletic. Yeah. I like how he'll finish on some of these but guys. And that's what we were looking for, too, when you think of how – drastically different that was for us this season we didn't have that menace we didn't have those people that made you feel like man i better not come near that quarterback otherwise they're gonna beat me like we never had that these guys they bring that that's that jumps off on their tape i mean even at the senior bowl you see these dudes like they they they, they looking for it you know and that's the weird thing even as i'm saying he's not as much of an athlete as the other guy. I still mm -hmm. think he like moves well though, which yeah. is weird. No, well, I and, he, and that's I why he I said get out there a little bit. But you're right, long term. Yeah, I like in the short area. Yeah. In a short area, I think man, he can move with whoever you need him to move with. I just don't like him when you're like when I think of Jamari, when I think of Kenyon, 
when I think of Tyler in terms of when you see them climbing to the second right. level, when you see them pulling, and it's like, man, that dude is running. That dude is he a, a, as a defender. You're like, yo, that's a nightmare because I can't juke him and I can't go through him. Whereas with a guy like Zion, if I'm out there on the permanent Zion's pull, I'm about to stick you here and I'm going over here because I know you can't do that and you going you top heavy. You know what I mean? So like that's kind of how I looked at him. But the the other thing that I said, man, with him is this. Because he's not crazy strong, like he has a strong punch in terms of stopping power, but not in the sense of like ragdoll you. He does win a ton, but he doesn't necessarily generate a ton of movement in yeah. terms of like when he's blocking guys, if that makes sense. It's like it does. you'll see the ball at like the three yard line and he will win his block. His guy's not making the play, but he's only blocked from like a half a yard. Or maybe one yard. It's not like doesn't a look pretty. Yeah, it's it doesn't. And that's why for me, I'm like when I saw his grade anywhere between the second and fourth round, I'm like, that makes sense. Because if you're not getting the, you know, blind side type film where oh he's driving the guy into the water cooler, it just doesn't feel the same when you're talking about Lyman and Prospect. But I do think he's a really good player. And I think that he would definitely help us when you're talking about potentially a Trey Turner leaving, right? You're talking about potentially when to add some more higher end talent, some better players in there, and not just saying, "Hey, can," um, <laughs> not 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 uh, Hague, but uh, oh my God, uh, Leglue, can Leglue get it done? And can uh, Dodson just those two guys solely? You're like, man. This is a guy that is a natural guard. This is a guy that has the size. This is a guy that could bring another element to that that's part. That's the other question for maybe a dude like that. Yeah. If we're looking between second, fourth round, mm-hmm. maybe even the third round. That, would he be an upgrade over a dude like Luke? Exactly. Like immediately. Like, you think he'd be the starter? I think that he could. I think he would come in and compete with that. Okay. I personally do. I don't know if, like, because of, like I said, some of the, the heavy leaning and straight leg stuff, I would want to get that out of him because that will get you beat in a bad way at the NFL because everybody's just so athletic now that you cannot be that type of player. So that's the only concern I would have with him. But if I'm taking him in the third round, I still feel like it's great value for that. Yeah. Yeah. All that's right. It. Last guy. Last guy, man. It's perfect timing, too. We got about 10 minutes left, man. Trevor Penning. Trevor Penning out of uh, University of Northern Iowa. That's LJ Fort's school, by the way. For Is it? Yeah, yeah. For for, for my uh, my 1AA guys out there, man. But um, with him, man, amazing size. 6'7", 321. Um nasty streak mm-hmm. very very nasty streak super strong as well man you see him versus the bull rush man he eats it up he has that anchor um plays with just that nastiness when you watch him he, he's that guy that wants to do all the extra he, he's the one that yeah I, I, it'd be a lot of non it'd be beep 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 when we'll be talking to each other if i was playing against him i could already just i was envisioning it while watching him on the tape like yeah i would not like you and you would not like me either it would be the perfect match yes but honestly man i hate him at left tackle i do I not bring this listen up. i feel dude. like this might be the most overrated guy listen here. dude i I, I it's i hate size, him right? i the, hate him at him. left tackle bro i think he is a guard I do. Really? I'm moving him to because right now the best case if him is six seven two big for guard. No, for me the okay. best thing I can see for him if it depends on how he plays with his pad level though in terms of keeping good uh, in terms of just like I said not being too high. But this is the thing for me, man. With Trevor, I don't think that he is athletic enough to handle speed at this level. These guys coming off the edge at the NFL level are flamethrowers. You feel me? He don't he don't move like that out there. And he and he's yeah. a waist bender. So it's like you can't be a waist bender top heavy and you can't move with these guys with that type of burst. You're just asking for a ton of holding calls or you're going to get somebody quarterback killed. You watch him on the senior bowl when he actually had to face that type of competition. Not with his face not there, you and not, because it wasn't no flamethrowers out there like that to that level. You watch him at that senior bowl, especially some of those practices, and it's like, bro, the fl- like the speed, it hurts him. He can't handle that. To, like versus NFL caliber speed, so for me that's why I'm like, man, I like I would like to try him as a guard because I think right now he's capped as an extra O lineman. Like I don't feel like you can put him out there as a tackle realistically and expect to win. Could he get you in a out of a game maybe in a bind? Sure, but 
where am I picking him at then if that's the case? Because they got him. They got him. First. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. Early second right. right. So I'm like, if you're going to talk about him to that extent, but I also think about Elijah Vera Tucker from USC a year ago. He was a guy that had good tape as a tackle, but he played at guard all year. He also has good size. Now, granted, I don't think he was as tall as Trevor, but for me, I think that Trevor can still, if you teach him or just make him have to redefine that part of staying low, making sure you're playing with good pad level, I think that he can move into guard because of his size. I think that it would be a lot easier for him playing against the run because he is a strong guy. He has a strong punch. So versus bigger body interior guys, they're going to want to run down the middle of him. That's his strength. As an edge rusher, I don't want to run down the middle of him, but I don't need to. I'm going to use my speed and make him come and get me. And that's what he can't do. Like, you, man, imagine him trying to bend with the T. Imagine, not even TJ White, Alex Highsmith. He's not bending with that. You know what I mean? So if I put him at guard, though, I do feel like, like I said, man, in terms of guys trying to run down the center of him, he's going to be able to handle that with his punch. I do think that when he's protected with the center and a tackle, now his lack of mobility isn't highlighted as much. So as a guard, it highlights his strengths and minimizes his weaknesses. Whereas if he stays out there at tackle, it's the reverse. It's going to highlight what he's, str- what he's struggling with and minimize the thing that he has best, which is, man, this punch, this strength right here. He just doesn't have the feet to go with it right now to be on that perimeter from my perspective. Dude, I'm with you. Whenever I was watching some yeah. of his stuff, I'm like, wait, you're showing these as highlights? I yeah, guess bro. he's technically winning, but then... Even some of the times they were like trying to get the ball out in space, I'm like, mm-hmm. he kind of looks lost at times yeah, a little bit. Here's what yeah. I've written down. Doesn't feel as technically sound, mm-hmm. but can get away with everything due to his size. Which is 100% it. Yeah, when he was that's play- how I felt. And the size helped him because he was playing at UNI, which is a smaller level school, right? It's not even to the extent of like where GMU was playing, where you're still facing a lot of athletes, a lot of speed. Out there was a lot more bigger body stuff. You know what I mean? They, they want to do the whole, hey, I'm going to hit you hard, and we're just going to push each other back and back. Jam, you trying to speed you out, space you out. In the NFL, it's speed. It's space. You're not going to get any of this, oh, let's just bang our heads against each other for four quarters and hope for the best. Yeah. It's like, nah, let me see if you can come out here and swim in the deep end of the pool. And for me, I just don't think he can, man. Not at this level. Like, So... Why do people have him high? It's just because of the size. They think yeah, they the, him up. The, the size is undeniable. The size is undeniable. And when you watch his tape versus his level of competition, he looks good on tape, right? Some of those games, he looks good. But the difference is when you watch him versus NFL caliber tape. And that's what you see at the senior bowl. And that's why for me, I was watching both because I'm like, he's not facing these type of rushers at you and I. But when you're watching him versus these type of rushers in this setting, He's struggling because it's highlighting the things that we've seen on tape that he got away with solely because of his size. Whereas now you're not going to always be able to get away with that at this level. So, I mean, I'm sure the more tape gets out on him, man, that's going to be real. But yeah, the size is, that's the intriguing part, the size. The size and just tough. Big yeah. guy, like you said. He the, the, has the, a little mean Oh, the, the nastiness is there. Yeah. yeah. Like that's all the stuff that I guess it's going to make the highlight tapes. But at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not too high on this guy. Yeah, I wouldn't I feel good either, taking man. him in either the first or second round. If you're just saying, hey, I would we're not moving either, bro. him to guard. I'd rather have the guys that already played guard, and we saw some really me good personally. Stuff on him. I the would as well, man. Too. I, I don't want projects this year. I want more of the proven commodities or guys with either crazy high ceilings. You know, like that's kind of my thought process. This go around. I'm not. I'm not feeling that right. We got two minutes left. All right, so let's do this, man. Um, I think we got one. Just want uh, to super, to yep, and then up. after that, yeah, and after that, man, I gotta get we gotta talk just quickly about the UFC fights this coming on tomorrow. Sure. So, yeah. All right, let's go. You dub, in my opinion, Minnesota right tackle Daniel. I'm gonna try this, <laughs> Faya Lele. Mm-hmm. could be everything we wanted Banner to be, and it's not sounding like the Steelers are planning on keeping Banner. I haven't heard anything about that, yeah, I have not heard anything either, but what I will do is this, um. I'll check out that uh, the Minnesota right tackle. And like I said, anybody else that has prospects y'all want me to check out, send the email to MotesWinners at gmail.com. Motes, like me, my last name, Motes. All right, winners at gmail.com. Send me all prospects that y'all want us to talk about, that you want us to watch tape on and break down. We will make sure we do that on these shows leading up into the draft. All right, definitely keep those names coming. One more from Let's Go You Dub mm-hmm. says, by the way, Motes, if you ever feel the need... <laughs> 
if you're just sitting around, yeah, yeah. want to watch an old school game of trenches football, <laughs> Air Force versus UW. Oh, that's a good one for you. Okay, okay. I don't know if that's this year. I, I I'm gonna have to check it. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, cause otherwise I turn on Wisconsin tape and I see them with like ten guys on the line of scrimmage. No, no, no it, it'll be nine guys on the line, all connected, unbalanced formation, and they running that ball single back formation. I'm like, yeah, this is extra old school, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But before we get up yeah, out of he here, he must be talking about this year, October 9th. It's okay, twenty four to fourteen, Air Force One. I like it. Now I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna tune in them and I I'll, I'll rewatch you. you. know, I'm down for all that. But um, I was gonna say before we do get up out of here because you know the time is right and we do got other things we got to do on a Friday. Man, we got UFC two seventy one tomorrow night. Man, Israel Adesanya the rematch versus Robert Whittaker, Bobby Knuckles, middleweight. We also got Derek Lewis, yo boy, Mr. My Balls was hot, versus Mr. Shuey himself, Ty Tuivasa. Whew, I'm excited about that. And we got Jared Kananier, I think I say he says last name, or uh, I'm, getting, I'm butchering the last name, but more importantly, versus the guy, the new improved reinvert, uh, reinvention of himself, Blonde Bomber, Blonde Bronson, Derek Bronson as well, man. I mean, I, I'm liking this card, man. I'm liking it. So we'll, we'll start with the Derek Lewis fight because I know that's that's a guy that you've talked about before. He's yeah, you know you like the knockout, right? Absolutely, and that's your dude, man. He he didn't he he didn't have a knockout. He was last fight he came with the knockout, man. You got to let me know on this. Can mm-hmm. we trust him? So this is the situation, bro. Um, if I'm putting some money down, can I trust him? This is the situation, Derek. Under normal circumstances, yes, because he has developed a new style. He is going to sit on it and wait on one punch. That's his thing now. He's not going to throw a lot of punches. He's going to wait, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. He's getting absolutely yeah. Smoked. And then he, he connects that one punch. That's his thing. The problem is this: the guy that he's fighting, Tai uh, Tuivasa, he is a knockout artist the exact same way that Derek Lewis is, but he has more volume. He's the guy that knocked out Greg Hardy. Okay. And then he jumped out the cage oh, and drunk the all, shot. He's, he's all tied it up. Yeah, right? and he drinks the shots out of the shoes. Uh, like yeah, random people's yep. shoes. Yeah. So he can't what, <coughs> didn't he come in with a, a weird ass song too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh it? uh the Spice Girls. Was that what it yeah, was? Yeah, so tell me what I want when I really, that's really what want. Was. So tell me what like I remember him. that's what I he does. Him. So he's a knockout artist himself. You know what I mean? Like all it takes is one shot. So for me, I'm like, honestly, this is a pick 'em. I don't anticipate this going longer than two rounds. <laughs> Like, this is the fight that I'm excited about because I'm like, it's a guaranteed short fight. It's going to guarantee to be excitement and fireworks, but it's not going to last long, okay? And he also said that if he, Ty said if he wins, he'll take a a shot out of Derek's cup. Oh, my Yes, because God. last last wait, fight. Wait, wait, if because, Derek Lewis beats him. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, oh and because Derek Lewis won his fight and he oh threw his God. cup in the stands and, he, and it was like, what you doing? He was like, I'm creating an NFT. He was like, so he took just the the what he was actually wearing. I'm like, bro, I don't don't throw that anywhere, bro. Like after the fight, you imagine Derek Lewis cup after the fight. Ugh. So, so boss is confident in himself. Yeah, yes, very confident, man. That'd so, be so I'm excited about that fight because of that. So for me, I'm going Ty Tuivasa because I want to see the shoey. I want to see him just keep you this momentum going, shot. and I cannot see a cup shot, bro. I would throw up, bro. So yeah. The next fight that uh we'll talk about though. Oh, and who do you so he who you like? You you going with <laughs> Damn dude. <laughs> uh, hey. Is there an over under? Maybe I would want to do over under for it's probably how long a the pick em though. Oh, that'd be a good yeah, call. I mean, does, yeah. Do they do that? No, they do, yeah. Yeah. You you can pick how long the fight it lasts, you can pick how it ends, whether it's a knockout, submission, DQ, uh decision. And it could just be knockout by either one. Yeah, absolutely. I might yeah. do something like that. Yeah, you can pick Naka. You can even pick the rounds too, man. Who do I think is going to win? Mm-hmm. Ah, man. What's going on with Lewis? Is he like, is he on the downside of things a little bit right now? Mm-hmm. His last fight, didn't he get smoked? He got smoked because he was fighting Cyril Gaon. That's the guy that just uh, lost okay. to Francis Ngannou because Cyril is very well-rounded. As we saw, why he even gave the challenge to Francis the way that he did. Ty isn't that type of fighter. He's not there yet. Ty, Ty, no, I don't think he ever get to that because yeah. I don't think he ever wants to. Ty is, man, he, he fighting like I'll have ways fight. We're going to come in here and I'm going to punch you in your face until you go to sleep. All I got is five good punches in me. That's all I'm going to need today. Like, that's how these guys going to go down. It's a toss up for me. Yeah. Based off everything you said. I'll probably do the round thing. I'll probably do yeah. maybe the under on the round or by knockout then. Mm-hmm. You're saying 
to Ibasa then. Yeah, I, I like I like Ty by the knockout. Give me the shoey at the end of it as well. All right. Okay, I'll go with Lewis then. All right, so here we go. Main event, though, baby. Main event. The main event. It's the rematch now. Israel Adesanya versus Robert Whitaker, a.k.a. Bobby Knuckles versus the last style bender. Now, for me, man, when these guys fought last time, uh, I thought it, it was a close fight. It was a good fight. I thought that even though, um, even though Izzy knocked him out, it was like Robert had a lot of close misses, if it makes sense. And I, I just keep asking myself, how much of that is Izzy just being slick, smooth, seeing his punches, and how much of that was just some luck? Because I'm looking at some of these kicks that are near misses. I'm talking barely missing his chin. I'm looking at some of these punches, and I'm just like, man, if that would have connected, he is out. Now, the problem is it didn't connect, but since we're going to get to see it again, that's the part that makes it just a little bit intriguing. Now, for Izzy... Izzy, man, the only fight he looked bad in was when he bumped up to fight for the light heavyweight belt versus uh, Jan Blahovich because his wrestling was really exposed or the lack thereof. Problem is this. When he's fighting at middleweight, he's too big. So those guys don't have the same type of impact on him in terms of wrestling because he's just naturally bigger. He's naturally stronger than those guys. So for me, I just feel like I think it's going to be another good fight, but I like Izzy a lot. I think Izzy puts on one of those shows man he's on one right now yeah he is man the izzy stuff of uh whitaker just just missing mm -hmm. and you're wondering if it's luck or is just is he that good yeah. and he wants to be that close it's almost like with crosby mm -hmm. and hockey oh man it ricocheted off like 10 boards and crosby got like, the assist like did, did he mean to do that he did it on purpose right <laughs> or is it just pure luck? <sighs> i think i'm with you on this one i've seen a few out of sonya fights and you're right the one that he lost yeah. when he looked worse on was when he bumped up and the duty face was huge yeah yeah polish power man so yeah I'm, i'd go with on yeah. Adesanya on that one i feel pretty good about it too he's yeah. seems like the most talented out yeah, there right but now. like but this the thing though like versus anyone else Robert Whitaker, bro, is like nice. You watch him and you're like, bro, he can punch, he can kick, he man, he he hits, he's nice. But Izzy's just one of those matchups where I'm be just like, like once in a generation yeah, because like you think like I think of Izzy not to the same extent, but it reminds you of the John Jones type where you're looking at this guy and you're like, he just looks like he's on a he's competing at a different level than everyone else athletically toughness showmanship confidence like he checks all those boxes i mean even conor mcgregor was giving him a little love in terms of like man he's one of the last ones that don't just fight but they actually perform and it's a difference like we talk about man it's a way to win a fight and there's a way to perform and win and as a as a consumer we like the entertainers it's like i want to yeah. see the Derek lewis's i want to see you know the 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 tied to evases that jump out and, and drink the the shout out the shoe you know man after they get it. it's performance but at the same time, it's like, man, you also got to have that skill. And Izzy definitely has that, man. Like, this, that's it's going to be a good fight. But, man, I'm, I'm definitely, oh, that's a perfect comparison right there. $7 Roethlisberger. They call him a young spider, Anderson Silva. That's the, the spider right there. But, yeah, he's one of the, all, like, all-time greats as well. But very similar, man. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'll go yeah. without Asanya then for sure. I like it. I like it. Whew. Well, with that being said, man. This was day going good day, baby. Oh, this was great. Heck yeah. And I look like I won't be late to my other, uh, you know, endeavors for today. So with that being said, man, shout out to everybody that was with us on this Friday morning. Hope y'all have enjoyed your morning. Hope you're waking, big roasting toast. Whatever you had to get done has gotten done. And now y'all are ready to enjoy the rest of your day. So with that being said, stay safe. Enjoy the big game. And we'll see you on Monday. And as always, until next time, baby. Peace.